this is much safer in this larger space given the current COVID situation. We're all wearing masks, which obviously we're supposed to be doing. So please, if you have trouble, you just ask people to repeat because clearly it's not going to be as clear with a mask on as it would normally be. Um, apologies, we've got um, Plu has sent us apologies. Yes. And that's the only one I think. Jill is just literally arriving as we speak, so that's fine. Uh, just to remind anybody again about conflicts of interest to, to declare them either now or when the items come along. Uh, and then we'll have the approval of minutes. We've got two sets of minutes to approve that have been sent around. There's the minutes of the last meeting, which was sent around a couple of weeks ago. So I'll just do those first. Has uh, anybody got any uh, queries or corrections with those? Probably just on the Riverside Moorings. It just says about the um, uh, where was it? The safety certificate of insurance. But that was on the boats, wasn't it? Not the um, Moorings. True. Hmm. Okay, so we need just to read with that there to make it clear whether that was yep. referring to boats, not the Moorings. Yeah. Okay. With that amendment, is everybody else happy with them? <coughs> yep. So we've got the proposal from Colin, seconder, Richard. So we approve those. And then the other set of minutes that uh, were circulated were the Finance Committee meeting, which we had uh, a week ago, I think it was now, wasn't it? Um, those were circulated, I think, on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. So for those who were there, is everybody happy with those? Two reflections, yep. Sign those there. Thank you. Right. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, as you know, we stop the meeting to take uh, public forum. Uh, this is technically restricted ten minutes, but I am prepared to extend that if there's a lot of people who want to speak. I do see there's a lot of people here tonight, so clearly can't go on too long with it, obviously, but. We can go over the 10 minutes if, uh, if there's a lot of people who wish to speak. So, to spend the meeting now, is there anybody who wish to speak to us? Yes. You put your hand up. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Um, as you may aware, I'm well aware of Park Hill, Lake Sands Village Hill. I'd like to make you all aware that there has been a slight change of um, assignments. I am no longer chairperson to Lake Sands Village Hall. I am now a gopher. I will be. <laughs> I, I am the gopher. Gopher that goes far. Like to um, make you aware that uh, the repl my replacement is Mike Turner and Sandy, who is with the Right Honourable Vivian Spikins. So. Um, <laughs> I can get the that. So, so, so the chairperson is? Mike Turner. Mike Turner, thank you. And so um, you might still see me lingering around, hopefully as a pleasant smell instead of a bad smell. Thank you. Um, just like to raise concerns, how many people live down this road? One, two, three, four, five. Can you just give your name and everything for the record as well? Yeah, so um, my name is Alicia. I um, speak on behalf of my parents. Um, they live down Spice Road. They'd like to raise their concerns about planning application made for a barn conversion, whatever it is, at the south of Fen Farm. Um, just purely on based on infrastructure, water pressure, the lap that the electric's gone off 38 times this month already down the road. Um, Broadband is shocking. I think we have a 0.96 megabyte upload, which is quicker to get a hamstruck road with a message than to send it through the internet. Um, so yeah, if we would like to raise that really and get support from you guys about it, um, this is the second time it's been placed. I think. We yes, I remember you came to us a few months ago and said similar similar so things on that occasion. That's true, it was on Zoom, wasn't it? Yeah. So just, just a bit more support for the now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. The planning committee will note <coughs> your comments. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Um, yeah, there has been communication between um, um, Chairman of the Planning Group 
and there has been communication because um, the parish council is not a consultee on prior application <coughs> applications for change of use. But um, it was last applied for in March of this year, which yeah. we got involved in uh, yeah. to support you. And now we're doing the same with a, an added bit on, because I, I noticed um, over the weekend there's a slight change to their plans. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're supporting you. We've got to be refusing, even though we're not a consultee. Yeah, for the I same understand grounds that, as what yeah. we did last time. I believe it doesn't match the name of the plan and stuff like that yeah. anyway. So, yeah. so from that perspective, it's all of those boxes anyway, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, just wanted to raise it and obviously have it minuted yeah. to say that we've got that support. So, yeah. thank you very much. We appreciate yeah. that. If I may, Paul, we have already made tentative contact with Power Networks because the problems with electricity in the area, and I've just given a copy of this to the clerk. Thank you. So, we're trying to get some improvement in electricity, <laughs> but the excuse is always, oh, well, it's um, <coughs> we sell the electricity that comes from the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? David? Well, I'm going to Mr. Pope and then I'll come to you. I'll just come up here. No, but that, that was always going to be a problem, as I said. There's not a lot I can do other than just speak as loudly as I can. Um, a few comments regarding the tonight's agenda. Um, some comments by the PC members the social media and the press have been false and misleading. Sorry, David, I can't quite hear you this time, sorry. <laughs> My. Anyway, I ought to talk louder then, don't I? Uh, the first thing is the school field. Um, uh, many years ago, um, we decided to purchase the school field. Um, the whole thing was done totally legally by Tom Matt, we got it. Um, and uh, there was not full heart support by the parish council for this field, but um, I, I made the point that, um, uh, that, that um, we've never going to have a William Marshall charity in Ogwell, we've never going to have a Claw Coates fund in Ogwell. So this was a good opportunity get this field, let the term run out with North County Council so we get full share. Then we'd have a pot of money uh, which would be there for the use, interest only, to um, various organisations within the parish. Uh, and it could be run separate from the parish with the uh, I thought about five trustees as this is what I suggested. Um, there's also a three year bar and apply for grant again. Um, we had a uh, uh, we had a job getting it through uh, the members, um, uh, but there's four four people voting in favour. Uh, uh, one was myself, Doc Williams, and the other two are dead. Um, <laughs> and there was three against. And they were the three members from Three Olds Lake End, and there's about five abstentions. So we, we squeezed it through on that. Um, that was what it was meant to be. But now I see um, that talking about um, talking about using the money to subsidise or fund the roof of the village hall. Well, really, to me that seems a bit ridiculous because once you, once you sell uh, the, the land at uh, the school, um, you're losing an asset, but sticking it in the uh, village hall, you're creating a liability. So uh, I, I can't really see um, you know, where uh, that makes sense at all. Um, the other thing is, which you've probably looked into, but if not, you need to look into, um, the sale of the land is a uh, 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 what's name income uh, capital income uh, the repairs and that to the hall to the roof and thing is a revenue expense you can't use capital income to finance revenue expenses so that is something you really need to look into uh, the problem with the with the village hall um, 
that uh, again when it came up for sale, uh, but the village parish council used to um, use the village hall for parish council meetings, but they weren't paying no rent. So Mr. Foley said, "You've got to start paying rent." Of course, we we, we said, "What will the rent be?" He said, "Pay the hall value at 30,000 30, and uh, um, ten percent is a good rate, so three thousand pound a year." Well, Paris Council said, no way we will pay that sort of money, we can't afford to do that. So then he said, well, I'll put up for sale. Well, of course, I was in constant touch with Bluey at the time, and he said he was going to buy it for storage, which is about all it's worth. worth. So the Paris Council thought it was a good asset for the village to have, so they, they made a, a buying of it, and uh, the agreed fee was around about £35,000. He then said, I want to meet some representatives in Parish Council at Down the Market where he lives. And uh, as a chairman, vice chairman and the clerk went over to meet Mr. Bogey. We had given uh, we had given our uh, representatives in a hard bargaining situation they could go to forty thousand pounds. As soon as they rung the doorbell, Mr. Foby opened the door and he said, Oh gentlemen, before you say anything um, I've just had a bit of 45,000. So he, he got them over a barrel. So we paid more than we wanted to pay and, and more than they had the right to agree to pay. Um, so that, that, was, that, that was that. But you know, that didn't go... That, that didn't go down very well with the Paris Council. Again, that's a bit of a job to get through. That's like something at file four. Um, but it was great that some members of the council, including Paul, was to run a subcommittee and they could basically run this um, village hall um, self-finance. Self but over all the years that they've been running this hall, there's been very good reports, well, been good reports from them about their financial situation. Uh, they're still okay and that sort of thing. And, uh, and they named all the refurbishments they've done, which included roof, windows, even uh, kitchen and new sort of thing. It's all named, which they pay for themselves, and uh, which was a great credit to them. Uh, but it suddenly comes up that August 2020, which was like last year, they suddenly find they're in need of money, but you can understand money, but when we start talking some of the horrendous figures that we are talking about, it start making your ears break up a little bit. And um, so anyway, um, my view is that um, I think if their figures are true, that is far too much money, because I think the exercise is far too expensive. I think they're uh, overcharging, um, and uh, I think they should definitely not use the school money to subsidise the village hall. Thank you. Thank you, David. Anybody else want to speak or can we move into the meeting? David. Uh, thank you, Cooper. Welcome, Productions. Um, I just want to advise um, Council that um, the last video of the last session has had 226 views according to the YouTube channel, which is a, quite a positive response for a local uh, video. And uh, one or two people have commented how um, grateful they were to see the video of the meeting and how helpful it was to get a bit more of an insight into the working of the council. So I just thought I'd mention that to you so that um, you're aware and can take it into account when you deliberate on um, the question of um, setting up your own uh, arrangement for videoing or streaming council meetings. Thank you. Okay. I didn't actually mention to people that we are being video because we were, we were last time and I told you all in advance we were again, but it's, it actually probably is prudent that I did just mentioned to everybody that it is being videoed again in the same manner and um, procedures as last time. Right, will we start the... Uh, oh, sorry, Sue, did you... I didn't... Did you.
you go, sorry. Uh, Sue Lowe, just wanted to follow on partly from what David's saying, partly what I've asked in the past, is that I appreciate Upper Parish Council didn't feel it was appropriate um, to have research, a survey and consultation across the parish to look at community facilities, the need for them, planning for the future and so forth. <coughs> However, there are um, such surveys of this kind going on in other parts of the country. And the one I noticed most recently was Central Bedfordshire Council, a much bigger authority. However, they have taken the trouble because I think exactly the same way that they do, that a lot of these community facilities and village halls are going to struggle moving forward, partly because of the net zero situation, partly because of changes possibly long term through COVID. And they have been surveying, researching, doing consultations across their whole authority area for community buildings and village halls to look at what is needed, what the public wants, and what is feasible. There's been a big piece of research in Edinburgh looking at all the estate that Edinburgh City owns, looking at how that's got to be um, brought into a net zero position. And there's a lot of money to spend in that. It's a big piece of work, and I just think to be making changes, and this hall needs lots of money spending on it, as it is, but to contemplate doing that without having looked fully at what the needs are and what the expectations are for achieving net zero, I feel is wrong. And again, I would ask if Upwell Parish Council doesn't feel that it's appropriate to do it for the parish, perhaps we can lobby the Borough Council, even Norfolk County Council, to look at these things on a broader basis. Thank you, Sue. <coughs> right, is that everybody? Well, thank you. Right, so we'll now um, start the rest of the meeting. We start the meeting. Um, first item on there is to go through the action log from the previous meeting. So, First item on the action log is the village feature on the riverbank opposite the church. Um, we've got an update there that we've had one quote back from in the site. The other two people, one didn't want to quote and we've not heard from the other company. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Okay. But we have had permission. Sorry. <coughs> just, um, just going back to the CDM being quite expensive, what, what, what's been offered at the moment. I think is a is a fair and reasonable figure for doing the work. Um, it, it comes within so, the, 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 the quote we received. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, well, uh, so you think we should accept that? Well, I think we should accept that quotation. Mm -hmm. I that. Yes, I was going to say we actually have now received permission to take the tree down as yes. part of because that was something we were waiting on before we did anything. But that has come through. I believe, I, I believe that Graham got that from that yes. Yes. So, um, is everybody happy that we accept that quote from Tim to, to uh, clear the site? Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. We'll do that then. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we've not had any further. The next item is the, is the signage on Twenty's Road, which we paid some money for. Um, we haven't paid it yet. Oh, we haven't paid it yet. We've agreed to pay, but we haven't paid. And it, but it's nothing happened yet, is it? No. Uh, the map board, um, Rob wasn't on the council when this started, but he's now a councillor um, and he's been involved with Pooh on this. Would you like to explain to the council what the problem to, with the board had been? Yeah, um, so the board itself is going to go up outside um, the church in Upwell. Um, we've developed a website based on the public footpaths in, in the vicinity. Uh, that is all done. Um, what we need to now do is create a map, an interactive map, um, that goes up on that board um, for visitors to the village to use it and to see what's available to them on that way. The problem I'm having with a map is scalability. So this has all been done on a voluntary basis, um, but I've not got the software to generate a map. There was a map created some time ago. Um, I've heard stories anywhere between five and 20 years ago. Um, and I'm trying to work with Prue to track down who did that artwork originally so that we can incorporate that in the new map and make it look something 
slightly better than what we've got, um, but it's still an ongoing, still an ongoing procedure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> Solar lights on low side. Is there any update on that? Joe? No, nothing to report. Nothing to report. Okay, that keeps going. The drop curve opposite tweet has now been completed, so that can come off the action over the next month. Um, this is the building on Dovecot Road that's partially collapsed and has got fencing around it, partly obstructing the, high, the uh, footpath. Um, I know that, that, the, that our county councillor and our brother councillor have been dealing with that with highways and with building control, um, and that's still ongoing, essentially. So there is, yes, people are trying to, to get something done about I it. Did, I actually wrote to um, the gentleman involved personally, he didn't get a response on okay. Thank you. So we keep that on there. The next one is the, is the uh, land opposite the school. Um, this is, it's almost the, the cutting the, ver the, the hedge which is encroaching across the verge onto the, and, and essentially making the highway slightly narrower there as a result. Um, Chris Madosno, a county councillor, do, do you have any further updates on this since I know that you've been in contact yes, with the yes, school? Yes, we had um, um, site meeting about two, two and a half weeks ago. Um, the issue remains what is highway and what is academy land. Um, it appears to be over a period of time the, uh, the hedging on the academy side has crept onto the highway. So in the interim, while they sort this out through boundaries, um, I've got agreement for the county council just to cut the hedge back for the time being uh, until they've identified exactly who is, uh, who is responsible. That should be scheduled. I don't know when that should be on the schedule of works now. And then it's going to take some time because boundaries are so far behind at Norwich. But I would imagine, sort of by before the birth nesting season, hopefully, um, we'll have some result on this to see whether the academy needs to deal with the hedges that are on the grass work, <coughs> or whether the um, county library needs to. Thank so. you. Thank you. So hopefully, by next meeting, something will happen. Um, the next item we were going to put in the diary for next year, once we once the low side lights have been reported on the effectiveness, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I'm not aware of any progress on the cutting of the hedge at March Riverside. Anybody else aware of that? No, no. nothing, because I was a passenger in a car today to go and look at the job and we had to pull over for a, a truck. And he wasn't very happy when we heard screeching down the side of his car. Oh dear. So that desperately needs doing. Okay. Perhaps we could send another letter to uh, to that landowner to remind him he did say he was going to do that. Yeah. <coughs> the sign's not been put up yet. No, put the sign up until the hedge has been cut back. Fair point. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next item was about the cemetery, and that's on the agenda, so we'll deal with that as an agenda item when we come to it. <coughs> um, Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Um, Clark contacted several um, local bodies to see if they were interested in forming a, a group. Um, hasn't been a huge response. No. The playing field have responded. They have. That's all I've had. So, um, tricky that one, isn't it? It is. You need willing volunteers to do these things. Uh, would the playing field like to take the lead on this, given that, uh, <laughs> well, I, there you are. <laughs> given that you... That you expressed an interest in? Yeah, we've had a uh, brief discussion and said that we'd do something on the Saturday afternoon. What we suggested is that we would bring our Park in the Park and Summer Fair a month forward. So we'd do activities in the afternoon on the Saturday for the whole village and the wider community. And then on the Saturday evening, we'd do our party in the park and the Summer Fair on the Sunday. Well, that's good. Mm. Okay. But we would need extra hands on the Saturday. Yes. Until. Can I suggest that perhaps we put an article in the next magazine just to call for people to to, to join with the playing field to me to help stage stage the celebrations? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we'll close that then. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, where are we? Uh, right, dogs we spin. Uh, this was the, the suggestion that we shared the cost with Outwell for putting this bin because it was right on the border between the two villages and would benefit both both sets of parishioners. But Outwell were not keen to um, progress that, and since this council already decided it didn't want to do it on its own, that, that item can now be closed as, as not happening. Um, the Dodge style was put back on the, the the Dodge was put back on after the last meeting because of a parishioner spoke to us, um, and I know we've been in contact with County Council about this, and we are hoping something will be resolved there in the near future. So we just wait for that. So it's ongoing. The Sam camera. Um, this was due to be located. Uh, I think in Lakes End next, but in fact, Wellnick Parish Council contacted us to ask could they borrow it to help them get some data on the use of the causeway. And since that clearly has a, a benefit for Upwell as well because of traffic obviously coming through Upwell Parish to get to and from the causeway, we've agreed to lend them the camera for now. And it, so once it comes back, then we'll restart the, the sequence where we left off within this parish. Um, the next item was at the last meeting a member of the public asked us about uh, the possibility of three holes in the extent forming a separate parish council um, and we agreed we, we would find out some information about that and I believe you've got some some information which we're going to deal with on the agenda later so that will be on the agenda um, the next item again is the Hall refurbishment, which is um, on the agenda as well. Uh, Baptist Road Dyke. There's a quite, there was some concern from Councillor Shorting about the, the dyke having some of it slipped in, the bank, and that's been reported, I think, now to the to the, to the board. Level commission and also the So that's been reported. So hopefully something will happen. Um, the next item is to do with the uh, Hedge Jubilee, Diamond Jubilee Cottage uh, in, tip, in um, Locksbridge um, and we have written to the owner there. Next item was the question, is this the mirror? No. Um, it, 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 it is that junction. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this item we just was, was discussed at the uh, Lakes End surgery that we held since the last meeting and uh, when a county councillor took it on board as well due to the fact that that is quite a difficult junction to turn out of and potentially dangerous and we are looking to seek permission from highways to get a, a, a mirror installed there. We would have to install the mirror because highways don't support it but uh, that's ongoing I think. Um, All right, Paul. Yes, certainly, Chris. If you've got something to contribute, please do so. Yeah, um, shortly after the, the, the uh, site meeting that we had, um, our area manager for County Highways went out and, uh, and had a look and uh, was supportive of uh, everything uh, that we suggested uh, as a result of that meeting. Obviously, when it comes to the mirror, the same situation applies as, as Toynton. It's not a, a county council policy, that would be something that would be generated through. Paris Council, and then I had an update chat with you today. Read the footpath uh, just into the junction there. Um, that was the only aspect he disagreed with me on in terms of um, whether that was suitable or not. And when I reminded him of the bus line around the corner and the, the, the bus stop um, around the other corner, he said he'd go back and have another look with regards to sort of you know improving the surface. It's only probably about three meters that particularly give uh, concern. But in terms of uh, white lining support is scheduled in terms of uh, bus stop moving supported obviously down to you guys and in terms with some form of signage on the opposite side of the road supportive again but we just need to get that shit. Chris can you just clarify moving the bus stop presumably is not out I mean, the bus shelter is our response but the bus stop presumably isn't yeah, our response. Obviously as you look after the bus shelter you need to communicate the fact that you're happy to have it uh, relocated, etc., etc., because obviously there'll be a cost involved 
and we've got to work out between us uh, how much and who's paying. Okay, so who do we need to speak to on this issue? Uh, we need to just go through your normal contact. Uh, Andy Wallace should be aware of that by now. Um, as I said, it's his boss I've been discussing it with, so if you CC me into the emails, I'll make sure I keep the thing uh, boiled and it won't go off the book. Yeah. Thank you. So we just need to know what the time scale is and what it is, and you need to get a little bit and be prepared to, yeah. to shift the bus shelf to there. Well, those was all the items that uh, Chris just went through with the final items on the action log, so that action log is now complete following Chris's uh, comments. So the next item is meeting dates for 2022. This is just a note that, 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 that was in the agenda. <coughs> Basically, Leah, it's the second, the second Monday of the month throughout the whole year. Yes, there's no change. So that's, and that will be in the next. Like, we're not starting this month. It'll be in the next. I think it's in actually putting this one. Oh, is it? Right. Jump the gun. Yeah, putting this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, where have we got to? Here we are. Discuss the possibility of taking over the cutting of the public rights of way. Um, this item, Prue's not here to talk about this, so I'll talk about it on her behalf. Um, as the council will know, this year for the first time, the, the parish council did finance some supplementary cutting to, to add to the cutting done by county, county council. Um, as a result of which, I think the rights of way have actually <coughs> been a lot better this year as a result of the cuts that we, um, that we financed. We were somewhat surprised to receive a letter a few weeks ago from the County Council saying that we asked to take over the responsibility completely from them, um, which none of us had any memory of ever asking them that question. Clue couldn't remember ever saying that. So um, we looked into it, and essentially the amount of money that would have come from County was relatively small, not sufficient probably to uh, to finance what we would like to do. And um, we discussed this at Finance Committee last week and felt that the investment that we put in this year had produced a level of result that we were all very happy with and so couldn't see any overriding reason why we should take on full responsibility for something which isn't technically within our, our area of responsibility. Uh, extra costs when we we're already quite happy with the quality this year. So the finance committee didn't budget for this when they when the budget was put together. That is on the agenda later. So unless anybody here feels strongly that they want to go against that, that that's just, that was the, the, the sort of the decision that was taken by finance last week. Everybody happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we move on uh, to discuss the development stroke selling of the land at low side. This obviously was referenced by one of our public members earlier. Um, this, this is included in the neighbourhood plan as a section of land for development. Um, I think it says 20 plus, at least 20 houses in that set in, in there. Um, it is, as David said in his comments earlier, it was bought at the time when the opportunity came up by the council in order to be an asset for the village going forward. Um, and the last time we discussed it as a, as a, as a parish council, the, the mood was very much a case of use it to create finance and to create additional housing, some of which would be aimed at the more affordable end of the of the market to help local people hopefully get on the housing ladder. Um, so, does anybody want to kick off? I think there was only three options, wasn't it? What we discussed was one was sell it, the other was plan of permission to then <coughs> sell it, and the other was develop it. But uh, I think we'd be silly to go for a quick sale. So, so I would be the, for the develop it, and maximise the asset, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. <coughs> also, we are all aware that there's a clawback on this. 
if we do anything before March, I believe, the end of March? No, that's gone. No, it's passed. That's gone. Has it? It's passed. Oh. The clawback period is passed. Oh, that's all right then. The, the, where, where we are at the moment with that, as a result of feeling we needed to get the ball rolling, we've asked for some quotes from some local architects just to um, put together uh, a plan for planning, outline planning permission for the site, which doesn't commit us to anything other than puts us in a stronger position to know what we're doing with it. Um, what we don't want to do, I would say, is, is spend money more than we have to on it. I, mean, I think it, it's there as an asset for us, not as a, a, a source of expenditure. Obviously, you have to spend money to develop it, but not. what well, I don't want us to be in a position where we actually spend more than we get back, which I think is not, not in anybody's interest. I don't uh, think that would happen, there. No, that won't happen. No, definitely not. Well, it, but there could be a large expenditure in the first instance. Well, there's always loans that we can take out of that. We've got to do the best we can for the community. What I suggest we do is we, we, the moment we've got, um, we've got these, we haven't, we haven't had to be played back from all the people we send out no. quotes to. So I think until we know exactly what the experts say is, is feasible and isn't feasible, uh, we can't really make a decision. But what we don't want to do is, is to commit to anything at this stage. It's going to tie our hands. I know David's comments about um, creating a pot from which the interest was going to be. I must admit, I'd like to see the minutes of that because I have no memory personally of that, uh, that, that decision. I remember the talk about getting an asset for future sale, but I don't remember it ever being that we would then invest the money and only use the interest. I've never, I have no memory of that at all. I've never, I mean, I wasn't on the council at the time, but I've never heard that muted. What I've heard was that the parish council bought it with the purpose of selling it for development. Yes. That's, as my, a, that's my memory as well. As a speculation, which didn't go down very well with some members, but that's, that was the whole idea of it, and now it can be planning, so um, it's succeeded. It's yes. it, was, it was new, we knew, I think, when we bought it that there was, a, as you say, a, a restriction on, on its use for so many years. I think it was 18 years or 20 years. 20, yes. And uh, once that time was up, then we would be able to do as we wanted with it. If not, the can So it was decided it was yeah. worth borrowing the money, which we did at the time, to get that asset so that in the future, which is now, mm -hmm. we would have an asset that we could use for the benefit of the village. Yeah, in fact, that hasn't cost us a penny. We've had a public works loan on it and we've rented it out. So it's covered itself and it's done very well for the village. Yes, yeah. it has been rented, as you say, for farming since... Uh, yeah, since ever since, it. yeah. So, at the moment, what I think we should do, if everybody's happy, is put together a group of us to look at the, the opinions coming back from the architects and then decide what the next step should be when we've got that information. Yes. Okay. What I suggest we do is, uh, after the meeting, if anybody who wants to be on that group contacts Melanie, and then we'll see how many people we've got who's interested, and then we can go from there. Okay, so that'll be on the agenda for next time for the follow-up from that. Okay, next item then is three holes in the extent to potentially form their own parish council. Um, and Melanie has made some inquiries and produced a little report which was sent around to you. <coughs> Melanie, do you want to just, for the benefit of the public, yeah. uh, tell so, them the contents? So I had a chat with Andrew Barrett, who is in charge of electoral services, um, and had quite a good chat with him, and I found out that that process, um, if initiated, would take at least a year of various consultations. Um, firstly, it would have to be approved by the Borough Council and then it would go to consultation to the villages. Um, so in the fact of setting this year's budget, it has no impact at all, as I say, because it will take a year for this to um, happen. Um, and that's it, really. 
I've sort of got a plan, obviously, that I put on there that he sent me, what consultations happened throughout the year. So have they received any official request at all, as far as you're aware? All I know is that one parishioner he was going to speak to on the Monday, um, but I spoke to him on the Friday prior to that, so I've heard nothing since. Do we know what form the consultation of the village is for takes? No, I don't. At the end of it, though, you need 37.5% of the electorate in the awareness to uh, vote for it. So there would be a fair flame there? Yeah, you would have to vote for it. Okay, so that's where. So, so it's not likely to happen in the near future. If it did happen, it'd probably be a year or so in the future. And there's, like and there's several hurdles. Okay. So presumably then the, the person who voted up has had this conversation with them, so knows knows what, what they have to do. Yeah. Okay. But any, any comments on that before we move on? No. Okay. Um, right. One of the the next item is the letterhead of the parish council. Now one of the uh, bits of feedback we got at the surgeries that we did since the last meeting, we did one here with three holes and one. Uh, at Lake's End is that several people in, in, at both surgeries felt that um, because the, it was called Upwell Parish Council, the, it was easy to overlook the fact that the parish consisted of three villages, Upwell, Lake's End and Three Hoes. <coughs> and although clearly that the official title of the Parish Council is Upwell Parish Council, there's no reason why we can't alter the, the letterhead and the logo and things that we put out to reflect, um, to reflect the fact that there's more than one village in the parish. And we did set, circulate to you all with the papers a few draft alternative logo stroke letterheads. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, is it three or four? There were three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. three. Yeah. There were two that were done by Rob, very kindly, as a, on, his, uh, on his computer, which are the two circular ones that you've got. And then there was the simpler one, which was to use our current letterhead and just write underneath the current letterhead, incorporating the villages of Upwell, Freeholds and Lakes End. Um, for those who, who haven't seen it, this is one of the, one of the suggested letterheads. Not the, uh, the logo, I beg your pardon. Yeah, which it's is, pretty nice to see a bit more clearer, please, Paul. Yeah, well, I can't really, unless you come and look at it, I can make it a bit bigger on my screen. There you go, it's a bit bigger. It's, it's only for the benefit of the um, back row. Yeah. As I say, everyone wants to come up and look, they're welcome to come and look. Uh, that was one. The other one is very similar, but slightly different font and thickness. And then, I'm going to show that one since you put it up. There you go. Well, have you got it? Yeah. Oh. It's just um, a simpler version. No circles, nothing else. Swan, Upper Parish Council, and the village is named underneath. So, those, those are three suggestions. We, we aren't committed to using any of those, obviously, but do the councillors have any feedback on this for us? I quite like the. Um, the round one with uh, Upwell Parish Council and up on three holes and lakes end around the round yeah. the edge of the coin, if you yeah. want to call right. it that. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. one. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The one with a font. Yeah. That's black and white. Our current one is coloured, but there's no reason why it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> the current one, Paul. I think the current one was developed when. Um, Upper Parish Council was a quality council, right. so it used to have Upper Parish Council, a quality council going across the top. Right. Um, when that all went by the by, we just kept the logo as it is and just removed the quality council bit, so that's why it's just got a bit of colour to it. Would the council be happy if Melanie used this as our logo in future rather than the one we've got now? That would be on the website and obviously on any uh, documents that we normally put our letterhead on. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, okay, good. So that hopefully will at least convince us all 
that all three villages are part of the parish. Good, thank you. Uh, next item is another item that was discussed at the surgery, but also uh, through emails that we received, which is to do with dog waste bins in three holes, uh, in two particular locations, one on Mud's Drove and one outside the hall here on Squire's Drove. Um, there were several people, I think, have, have supported that from, from the parishes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So, um, as you know, if we agree to do this, what we have to do is to, first of all, seek the permission of the Borough Council for the site in, and then pay for the purchase and installation of the bins, and then uh, pay uh, an annual figure to the Borough Council to have them emptied. Um, the Finance Committee looked at the costs of this last time and did include the, this in the reserve, so the money is there should, should the uh, Parish Council wish to, to proceed with that. So, does anybody want to talk about this? We just have to. Richard and then Andrew. I, I need to say this. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult situation because the more dog waste bins that we see at Bari, the more dog waste bins that seem to be required. <laughs> um, so you know, eventually we're going to end up putting them on every single street and not have a big enough precept to cover the cost of I think I think that is danger, and that's why obviously we turned down the one in, um, in Paris Hill because there was one relatively close to it, just in um, the rest of the... There is one in the plant that was a three horse plant. No, we've got no. one on Three Horse Bridge yeah. and one at Top Dark, Bard Oak Bank. Yeah. Um, Apparently, yeah. at, the, at the surgery, just to give some more meat to the bone as it were, at the surgery we had, it was reported to us that a lot of people drive and park outside the, the village hall here and use Squires Drove as a dog walking area you can't Sorry. <laughs> and and therefore they've got a, a higher density if you like of people walking the than you would expect for for this because people actively come to the area um so that was the that was the reasoning behind that one uh and and basically mudge drove is obviously quite a long way from the colored provision yeah. being that way into the village and so uh, again, um, there isn't you know, there isn't anything else in that vicinity for people, and there are apparently several people who use that area for their dog walking. Mm. Can I come in here? Because a few years ago we had a letter from Mrs. Um, Nelson who lived down there, and apparently they use it as a dog run. Squires drove. I don't know whether they still do. Um, the people who live down there, they let them off the leads, and yeah. uh, you know. Uh, a dog bin wouldn't be necessary, but I do think it is necessary at the top of Squires Drove. Can't, can we not do something about that? No. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's not within it's not our remit. Just a second, Andrew. Um, well, you can put a dog waste bin, but we can't do anything about people letting their dog go. Off leads? I thought that. Was... Well, we can't do anything. You know. Well, we can complain about it. It's against the law, the dog was there. Yes. And the proper control of the dog. Yes. So we could put a notice up or something. People I've don't read notices, sorry, but people don't read notices. No, well then we should inform the dog control man or something. It's not Andrew. very nice. A lot of kids use that. To so Andrew's school. been trying to speak for some time, Andrew. Oh. Um, all we need to do is get a photograph of the location and apply for a street furniture license for it and it's got to be on Borough Council highways land, it can't be on private land. But I was just going to confirm what you said. I've came this way to down the market the other day and did a shortcut and people I had seen somebody draw up and they got out and walked their dogs and having worked down the bottom here for 20 odd years it is well known that people walk lots of dogs and they don't always clear up no. and we can't obviously by putting the dog bin there's no guarantee people will, no, will use no. it obviously but if, you know, if you, it's there you, you, if you've provided one at least you can't be said there's nowhere for them to put it mm. Um, I, I get to take Jill's point that dogs were let off the leads and with nobody supervising them are not going to obviously use a dog bin um, but um, that, you know, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't provide it for people who are walking the dogs formally as well 
Does anybody want to make a proposal on this? What about a bin? Yes. Oh yeah. Or two bins. Case we two haven't bins. been there uh, for those that are good enough to use it. But would you would you propose that for Squires Drove and Muds Drove or just Squires Drove Drove? Both, because Both. I can imagine them using Muds Drove too as a dog run. Does anybody want a second? Rain, Jill's yeah. suggestion. Well, Colin got his hand up for this. Anybody want to amend that? Okay, we have all those in favour of that particular proposal. Okay, uh, any against? No, okay, so that was carried. So the first thing to do is to identify the exact locations and, and uh, the age of the other council or the, the licences that Andrew mentioned. And I'm happy to somebody contact Melanie to arrange a meeting with a resident as to where they think it needs to, it's no good me saying where it needs to go or any, you know, anybody else on the parish council. Um, I'm happy to arrange to meet with somebody and take a photograph of the location and submit that to Melanie, you know, to go to the borough council for the licence. Thank you. Do we have to pay for a licence? To, sorry, no. Please? no, we don't. Okay. We just need a licence to, from the borough council to say yes, we can, we, they've agreed and we can put one there. That's just it. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is to update the councillor responsibility matrix now that we've got new councillors and also to um, populate a new group on communications which is among other things going to look at the, the future uh, whether we do continue streaming or other of the, uh, of the meetings. So first of all, shall we just go through did you want to say something? Yes, I just thought uh, uh, my point brought it out the other day. I believe we still, uh, are you still on the, um, uh, one of the drainage boards for the parish council? Yeah. So on our um, responsibility matrix, perhaps our, our representatives. We should have that added as another line. Bit on there. <coughs> so can we do that? Until <coughs> so we know in future who our representatives are. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Okay. So no, perhaps you two could liaise with me and just kill the exact yeah. word in to put down yeah. for, for, for that. Okay, so, sorry. So I'm no longer temporary, I'm permanently on the next Okay, I'll, I'll just go through each group to make sure we've got the right people on them and see if anybody wishes to come off or new people to go on. Bearing in mind we've got two people to, to allocate to things. So the top one is the allotments group. And the allotments group. Can you something about that? No? Does Chris want to speak? Oh, no, it's a table leader, it's a table. Yeah, oh, Chris, Chris, sorry, I beg your pardon, I didn't recognise you in mask on, sorry, I didn't know we were standing there. Thank you, Chris. Sorry. <coughs> right, back to the, um, back to the uh, responsibility meeting. So allotments at the moment has got Andrew Allison, Keith Harrison, uh, Chris Robinson and Roy Shorting on it. Um, is that that's probably enough people? I would have thought, isn't it? Is everybody on there happy to to, to continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The next item is the, the cemetery working group. Uh, this has lost somebody because we did have um, Brian on it when he was councillor, so he's no longer on it. So we know we've got Prue Lester. Richard Melton, Chris Robinson and Roy Shorting on the cemetery group. Um, I understand there was a meeting last week, Paul, but I didn't get notified. So it was, it was two weeks ago, but yeah. Two weeks ago, whenever I thought, it was. I thought we'd notified everybody was in the group. I was made aware of it and I said, well, I know nothing. That must be an oversight, because I thought we'd invited <laughs> everybody who was on the cemetery group to it. Because no. other people were there, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. Pooh and Chris were there, weren't oh, they? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Roz. Obviously, you got. We probably didn't realise you were on the cemetery group. That's probably what happened. <laughs> right. So, um, do either of the new members want to go on the cemetery group? No. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we leave this to four then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Communications group. Is this is a new group. Now, both of you people who, uh, in your little speeches to us when you got elected, talked about improving uh, communication. So do I think you'd both like to be on that group? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Yes. Um, but is there an overlap with the newsletter and website group? Um, 
Possibly. There could be an overlap on that, certainly, yes. Mm. <coughs> so, would it be worthwhile kind of amalgamating the two together? That would mean, we'd have to ask, Clue's not here, so I wouldn't want to speak for her, but Christine, would you like to be on the communications group? Um, I'll be on the communications group simply because I'm already on the that, newsletter that's group, what that, was, that makes sense. Yeah, and who else has done that? Which is I am. Colin and me. <coughs> I'm happy to go on the communication yeah. group. So are you happy? To yeah. so, so, so we can probably um, <coughs> amalgamate the two groups actually and give them a new name, and that yeah. might make life simpler, might not it? Mm. Yes. So at the moment, that group would currently consist of Councillor Aston, uh, Councillor Lester, I'm just going to try and combine them there with me. Yep. Councillor Lester, Councillor Rose, myself, Councillor Shaw, and Councillor Pooh. Yep. Is there anybody else who's not been mentioned keen to get involved in that particular group, or are you happy to let that those named people form a new group? Yep. Okay, good. Finance is currently Councillor Aston, Andrew Harrison, Pooh Lester, Chris Robinson, and myself. That is one less than it used to be, because we lost um, uh, Megan from the group when she left the council. And we also lost Richard from it uh, when he was thinking about leaving the council and then changed his mind. So we probably could argue we could have another person on there. Yeah, Richard, did you want to come back on? Thank you. Um, I think Bill would like to would go on. Would you like to go on? Yeah, I'd like to go on as well. Yeah. Okay, we'll get um, Bill and Richard back on there. Though. Thank you. Footpaths. At the moment, footpaths is Councillor Lester. And Councillor Melton, just the two of them on footpaths. Yeah, just, just a suggestion that perhaps Rob would want to join this. Yeah, I was going to say that yeah, as I've done a bit of work. Yeah, yep, okay, so Councillor Shaw can go on there as well, thank you. Health and safety, everybody should be on that because the way we work on this particular one is that we say everybody's on that group so that they can be aware and uh, report things if they see anything. So we'll add both of you to that group if you're okay with that. Uh, highways, bridges, potholes, footway lights. Again, that's virtually everybody looking at this group, isn't it? Really, I think. Again, again, the idea again being that if you spot a pothole, we expect you know you to just to report it rather than doing things. So, if you're both happy, you can add it to that group as well, just with the rest of us. Okay. Then we've got the Lake Send Village Hall representatives, and we've got Councillor Aston and Councillor Rose. Um, and you're both happy to continue in that, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. Uh, unless anybody else wants to join them? No? Okay. Uh, next one is the neighbourhood plan. That one is probably a defunct group now because we hope that that's having been adopted and voted for, there won't be any further uh, need for that group. But Prue did say she felt that we should continue to have it active just in case some problem came up that required, um, I think, some appeals or something against them. So, so the suggestion is we leave it as it stands at the moment, just in case something comes up in the future. Excuse me. Um, is that the White Range Rover blocking the exit out for us? Does anybody on the council have a White Range Rover that might be blocking somebody in? I think it's I might. The, the yeah, idea. I think I, I haven't got a White Range Rover, but. Uh, I didn't think it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll come and move it. Thank you, sorry. Um, so where were we? Um, right. 17, Neighbourhood Watch. Um, we've got three people on that at the moment, which is Councillors Rose, Lester, and Melton. It's not a very active group at the moment, is it, that one? I'll just write for another bit. Um, do we. Do, do we want to continue with that group, given that it doesn't do anything? Can't see much point, but I do more for Snap. What about <laughs> you? It does obviously. So, no, neighbourhood watch, so we're still uh, the administrators on the um, upper and outer neighbourhood watch um, Facebook page. Um, okay. So we, do, we still do. Okay, so let's leave it as it is. Okay. The newsletter and website we've just amalgamated with uh, communications. Then we've got the planning group, which currently consists of councillors Aston, Gooch, Harrison and Lester. Uh, we've lost 
somebody from that because it used to be five and didn't it? And it's now four. Would so we do need another person to go back on there to make up the five. Richard, would you come back on it? Yeah. Would one of the new councillors wish to go on it? Very useful on that. Richard said he would come on. Yeah, I'll just check if either the new people wanted to do it. I didn't want to exclude no, them. Right. Bill, are you happy? Let Richard go on that one? Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah certainly. So we'll reinstate Richard onto that group then. Uh, playing field. At the moment we've got councillors Melton, Robinson, Shorty, and myself on that group. Um, again, it, it really doesn't do a great deal other than just the people on it who are on the playing field committee. But other than that, it doesn't do a great deal. Perhaps we should be more involved than we are. So we'll leave that as it is. Police. Colin is obviously our main person with this, but we also have myself, Ros Shortin, and Prue Lester mentioned as being part of the group. Um, I did go to a couple of meetings during lockdown on Zoom. As you know, I'm the Borough Council. Yeah. We do tend to rely on you for that one because you are high profile in, in, in that. Road safety, at the moment it's just poo, poo on that and in the past it's been difficult to anybody else interested. Do either of the two new councillors want to join the road safety Sam Camilla group with Prue? No, thank you. No? Okay. Uh, Upwell Primary School, contact. Now, we've got Councillors Rose and Councillor Lester down for this. In the old days, it used to be a, a school governor, didn't it? But I think that stopped, didn't it, when the change in the status of the school happened. Yeah. yeah. So do, what contact, if any, do we have with the school? Then? Prue does most of the contacts uh, with the school, because um, and most of the contacts really are more related currently to traffic problems. Yes. And um, I've already contacted the police on various occasions, and unfortunately, we do not have enough officers to enforce it. Yeah. And the borough is not considered at the moment. I would say we probably didn't have as good a contact with them as we did like, because when it came to the cutting of the hedge, yeah. we didn't get very far with our communications with them, and, we, and it's obviously we. We ended up with the county council having site meetings and things just to try and sort out who's cutting the head. So we possibly do need to do something to improve our relationship with the school. Something's working there. Yeah. We'll leave that unless any new councillors want to get on board with that. We'll see if Prue uh, wants to take that one forward a bit better when she's back. Three holes village hall. Again, we've got the same two people we had for Lakeside Village Hall, which is councillors Aston and Rose. And then you just stated you don't want to be temporary anymore, you want to be permanent. So if everybody's, anybody else wants to be involved, we should just leave it to the two. Yep, okay. Uh, Upwell Isle Charities, we've got councillors Robinson and Shorting uh, as representatives. And Norfolk Charities, we've got councillor Harrison Actually, the only Keith is the only one for that. We haven't got two for that one. Should we have two? No, um, take the minus difference. So one's fine. It's, um, there's one, two, see what was on the parish council, but they still was allowed to keep on the North Charities, so they still carry on the North okay. Charities. So, so having been to the meetings, you're quite happy that we yeah, got that's, adequate that's representation. Sort of. Good. Upwell Hall group is councillors Aston, Shorten and myself, and in fact, we probably could add Councillor Shaw to that, because he does come to those meetings, so you might as well wear a Councillor hat while you're there. So yeah. should we add Councillor Shaw to that? Does anybody else want to be involved in that? No, okay. And then last, the War Memorial, which is the Councillor Andrew Harrison, Keith Harrison, Prue Lester, and Richard Melton, are the four people for the War Memorial. So again, are you all happy to continue? Do either of the two new members want to be involved in War Memorial? No? Okay, good. So we've gone through that and I think we, we know where we are, yes? Yes, yeah. I'll send round an updated copy to everybody. Thank you very much. Do we put that on the website as well? We haven't done, no.
that. Yeah, I think it would be useful so people can see, you know, who they can contact. They've got a particular concern about something. Uh, right. Okay. With the communications group, um, what I'm going to suggest is that we set up a meeting of that. Um, normally, I'd say before the next council meeting, but we, we might be able to manage it the first week of January, I suppose. I don't think between now and Christmas it's likely to happen, but we'll see if we can set something up to happen in the beginning of January before the next council meeting, just so that we've got an initial, an initial report to give back to the next council meeting. Yeah. Um, right. We're on to the reports from individual councillors, groups, and the clerk. The first one they miss is always the planning subgroup. Andrew, is there anything in there you wish to draw our attention to for further discussion? Mm, no, I don't, I don't think so, other than the one I mentioned during the public forum, which we're on board with, even though we're not a statutory consultee. Um, I don't know why we're not statutory consultees on those. Um, if it wasn't for the lady who really emailed Melanie about it, the planning group wouldn't know we anything about it. it. Mm. Um, we have Arthurborough Council, that's Colin from Arthur Why the Parish Council is not a consultee on. Well, our chairman is. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't want to get involved. No, okay. I don't know why. I must confess, I thought Parish Council were. And I, I'd be on the company. Yeah, very much. Anyway, we can look into that for you. Yeah, good. Yeah. But okay, so basically <coughs> then, you, are we all happy, we've all had a chance to look at these in advance, are we all happy to, to approve the planning groups, the recommendations on all these items? Yes? No, no dissenters? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, next one is um, the street lighting situation. Uh, come to the house, and do you want to just tell people uh, what you told us at finance the other day? Yes. Um, I report the majority of the street lights that go out when they're either reported to me by a member of the public or the council or a councillor or I go out and do a drive, I've take an hour and do a drive around the entire parish to look for any that are out. Um, I've noticed over the past 12 months that I seem to be reporting perhaps two or three that continuously need repairing. So I've had a chat with Roy, the owner of West Protect, and he said that a lot of the lamps that are coming in are suffering from water damage as a result of the age of the housings that they're in. Um, the councillors remember we um, had all the sodium tubes and all the running gear taken out just so we could have the LED lamps put in. So it's the actual housings that are now starting to break down. Some of them have got to be in excess of 40, 45 years old. So um, he gave me a price for replacing these units and the Finance Committee agreed in the budget to allow for um, a few per year with an ongoing project to eventually replace all of the lamp housings over the um, next few years. But um, in the meantime, any of those that do go out, I mean, one of the typical one is next to the Town Street bus shelter, and there's another one in Town Street which have been out at least twice already in the 12, past 12 months, which they, they shouldn't be. So there is a contingency there for any that are suffering from water damage to start being replaced with newer units. Um, so with a long time, with a longer term aim of replacing all of the units throughout the parish again. Uh, and we were talking about us getting some help with the sill, infra sill um, infrastructure yeah. loans to uh, grants, beg your pardon, to help you know, reduce the cost of it for the parish council because obviously it is. A potentially large amount of money over over yeah. a number of years to do all this. When we went down the route of doing the LEDs, we obviously involved West Tech in, in doing that, and they said they, they recommended those that that that's the route we went down to actually so we could get them within a within a sensible budget. And the Tom didn't mention anything about the housing breaking down over mm -hmm. time, and we pay a maintenance contract to them. So all. all there's, there's two things in there. One is that obviously West Tech didn't actually say anything when we, when we went down the route of changing the, the running gear inside of all these, these lamps. And the other thing is if we try and do it over a series of years, well, the, the LEDs have probably been in there four years now, three or four years. Mm. By the time we've done it, yeah. chances are we're going to be changing all the LEDs. So we're going to put new housings on and then we're going to have to change all the LEDs again. It just seems... I think the, pr the price we given, or the price we was given was for a whole new unit. Um, he said the, the sodium type housings, which is what 
the majority of them are now. You said you can still get them, but they're ridic ridiculously expensive. Um, the plan is that it's not just, I I, from what I gathered from Roy, it's not just the housing, it is the lamp as well. Because the ones that we had, when you initially done them, um, with the Cobb LED lights, Roy has admitted himself he's very disappointed and he's actually contacted the manufacturers because of the rate at which some of them seem to fail. Um, I think at the time it was a new technology, a new idea, which has worked <coughs> predominantly throughout the parish, but there are some which they seem to fail quicker than others. But I think he's talking about not just the housing, I think it's the whole LED lamp unit that um, would be replaced. It just throws in the question that when we developed our budget, we were, I think we worked on an eight year period or something like that for payback on the leads that we were, we were working on. So our budget was developed around that and now yeah. it doesn't work. So we yeah. spent the money and then we spent the money again. It just seems yeah, but we do, so, under the maintenance contract, I have reported anything. If I've gone gone around done the parish sweep, you know, prior to, you know, in an autumn prior to the um, darker nights, I've reported anything up to at least 22 units that have been out, which nobody else has bothered to report, or because it's lighter nights in the summertime, you know, could, sometimes it can be half past ten before some of them come on, um, and we get that all replaced for the cost of the maintenance charge. So, you know, 22, 22 lamps. I don't know how much that would cost to replace all those. You know, each LED lamp, we can get that for whatever it is on the on the maintenance on the maintenance. So I think it's probably a bit swings and roundabouts, but um. yeah. presumably, again, I don't know that you, you you were both on the council at the time. But presumably, the maintenance contract would be uh, adjusted on a yeah, annual or biannual or something basis. So presumably, if it's costing them more than they expected, the next time we have it, it'll go up. No, it's it's a fixed, uh, at the moment it's been a fixed price. There's no way they've never come back to us and say <coughs> we need to increase the maintenance charge. It's been a fixed price no matter whether I report one unit a month. Presumably there's a contract that they must have an expiry date on it, surely. Not that I've seen. It was before my time. It hasn't gone up in my time. There's, there's, there's a fixed contract for extended period that was only an agreement that of where that cost would end up that was uh, budgeted at the time, so I don't think it we wouldn't have any means of stopping them coming to us now and saying that they wanted to increase that maintenance charge. Yeah. That, that's the logical thing I would imagine a business would do if it's costing them, you know, if they're doing 20 odd units at a time, I imagine <coughs> that's costing them more than they put in their maintenance contract. Yeah, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I should, imagine, I should imagine they gain over the years because it's very rare, you know, that to do 20. I see what you mean. Um, sometimes I can report 20. And then a week later, I'm riding around, and another one has gone out. Or Melanie will forward me one that somebody's reported to Norfolk County Council, and it comes back to the parish council. So I can report you know, half a dozen, and I see Westcotex van going out doing them. A couple of days later, I'm out one evening, and there's another one gone. So I just fill in the online form or um, email Roy and say, "Sorry, there's another one gone," and they have to send somebody out all the way from Deerham just to do one. So, so what you were suggesting, perhaps, Richard, if I or interpreting what you said is that perhaps rather than have a plan to replace them all over a number of years which is what we just suggested we just replace the ones that are failing frequently and leave the others as they are or am I not or was that a, a, two, a step too far with my no, I, think, I think what I was suggesting is that we, we asked Westcott Tech for a solution which they provided and they provided that solution on the basis of a, a warranty period which I'm sure was 8 or 10 years on the, yeah. on the early days um, but didn't Tell, tell us that the, the houses were going to fail. So I just think there's, there's a potential for a, for a conversation to be had there with, with, with mm -hmm. Westcott Tech. So, so maybe the answer is to actually to ask Westcott Tech for a price to replace them all. We worked out that would be prohibitive when we were at the finance committee the other day. Potentially, yes, more. but I'm just thinking if we look at that cost on the table and then we can perhaps have a conversation with Westcott Tech because they're effectively <coughs> they've sold us something that's only lasted four years that was supposed to last eight or ten years. But we're not paying the cost, they are. What, no, what was the price per lamp you yeah. had at the finance meeting? Um, 200, I think it's £250. £250 is the figure that I remember we said last week, per, per lamp. Yeah. I think we'd have to look back to see what the agreement was when we agreed to have them all done. Because um, we did, I know you, myself, and even I think crew, and that, we did a lot of research into how many lamps there were. We did away with some that were deemed you know, not beneficial. and then came up, you know, West Cotick gave us a price for replacing the mortar, well, not replacing them, but to taking out the running gear and just putting in the, the LED lamp. 
which was a suggestion we got from Station Parish Council. Mm. Uh, to Station Parish yeah, because yeah, they were the first ones to do it. Yeah. So perhaps we could also work to Station Parish Council and see if whether they've suffered the same, the same situations. Mm. Yeah. I have to say that the ones we had done under the Parish Partnership scheme, the 16, I think it was 16 we had done or something, which we did in um, Lake, Lake Avenue and Lode Avenue and all the, the small roads. There's only been one that's failed, and that was one in Lake Avenue, and that's because somebody shot the sensor out with, with an air gun. Other than that, none of those have failed. Oh. But the reason we didn't have that type of light replacing all the sodium light was because they don't quite give enough visual light on the footways and the, and the road. So the lights we have we did replace with the um, sodium replacements gave a lot, a lot better light. So. Uh, just two different agreements. Okay, so yeah. So I think we need to dig out the original. Let's. Agreement. I think Let's before we make a decision, yeah. we do need to know what because I, I, I didn't actually understand when we had this system last week that they would given us feel like an eight-year guarantee or whatever for these things. That, that, that I wasn't aware of that. So that's a, that does cast slightly a different light on things. If we've got a guarantee for eight years, why should we? spend money doing the guarantee period, I, can take, I take your point mm -hmm. on that. And maybe if they do want to do something sooner to save their money, they can do a, do a better deal than, than, the, than the 250 quid, given it's nail interest to replace the ones that are costing them yeah. a lot to maintain. Yeah. I have to admit that, you know, I'm surprised that when I go around to see LEDs, you know, the ones not working, and you see some of them are a shade different colour, and that's because he's replaced them with a trying to replace them with different lamps. So some of them are sort of the more of a off white than the stark bright white that the lamps give. Um, but so I am surprised that they don't okay. last as long as what so, we use. So the expecting. actions we agreed on, and I, I, please correct me if I'm wrong, the first thing is to dig out the agreement with Westertech and review it so that we can see exactly what it says, and then having learned that information we'll then have another discussion about the way forward is that yeah. is that fair yeah. yeah 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 okay good thank you uh, right the um, next item is village hall refurbishment update um okay now th those of you who have been keeping in the loop with this will know that the at the last meeting we talked about the fact that the, the, the the tender documents had been redrawn and they had gone out to a group of builders who had expressed an interest having seen it on the website, government website. Um, that closing date for return of the tenders was a week last Friday, the 3rd of December. Um, the tenders then went to be anonymised so that the panel we appointed at the last meeting could look at the tender document tenders and score them in line with the scoring chart that's also part of the pack. Uh, we're currently at the point where the tenders that were received before the deadline have been anonymised and have, I think, been sent out to the tender group. And currently, we're waiting for the all the group to score it. Um, so at this point in time, we don't have any more information about that to, to report until until they've been scored. So the next meeting will be presented with the choices and the recommendation of the of the group who are doing the scoring. So that's where we are with that. On so the um, on the the evaluation for the scoring, we nev never see any. Uh, there wasn't nothing attached with the tenders, so we don't know what work to be carried out that weren't attached to it. So what? The, the tenders. We never see the tenders or what work's got to be done and the cost. You should have done because that's what you're going to get with the tender. Do perhaps, perhaps, perhaps she's only sent out. The All she only sent out was the, ev the evaluation score on, on the paper. Although maybe she's waiting for you to acknowledge that before she sends the full thing. Then. Oh yeah, but it's a little bit of a job to, all we was doing is working out what and was I on their paper. You, you have a conversation with the lady who's running this for us, just to clarify, because I know she, she was waiting to hear from all of you and, and told me she hadn't heard from everybody yet, which is why I had that conversation with you before we started. 
but I don't know anything about it because I'm not in the loop, so I can't answer your questions because I don't, I've not seen the documents at all, so I have no idea. Um, I'm aware that apparently Prue did return her yes. scoring. So yeah. Prue, I, must, I, I Prue must have had everything. What was but if there's something you don't think you've had, speak to Lucia and she'll tell you. I think, I think the, the initial phase is we have to score on the basis of their proposal, as in, as in their health and safety and yeah. all bits and pieces like that. So I think we have to, we have to score them on that so that then, then presumably we will get the rest of it. Yeah, that's what I did and then sent it back for the evaluation, but it was a little bit difficult because all you was doing was really scoring on a piece of paper they give you. Right. So the paper takes on anything, doesn't it? It's a bit of a bit awkward really. Well as I said, if you've got queries speak speak to them and just uh, hopefully by the time we have another meeting you'll have all completed the process and we'll have a, uh, I said it's difficult for me to speak because I literally haven't seen anything so I don't know, I can't answer your questions because I've not seen the documents at all. Okay so that's where we are with that. Cemetery takeover. Okay now Sorry again to Ros because I was unaware she hadn't. Uh, she should have been at the meeting. But basically, you've all been sent a document as part of the papers, which is a report on the meeting that Prue, uh, Chris, and I had with um, three people from Bella, which was Councillor Long, the council leader, plus two people from the cemetery uh, group. Um, You'll see from the document that they essentially are happy in principle for us to take it on. They've given us advice about the process to go through about the extension. The good news is there they feel the area which has been used as a car park for the allotment holders, that first section after, will not need to be left for any length of time before it can be used because it hasn't been dug over and because it's been having cars parked on it they are confident the land there will be uh, sturdy enough to cope. Uh, the only thing that they did point out which was that the environment agency, if you remember we were all concerned a year or so ago about the environment agency because they were concerned about the level of the water table and whether there would be a viability for the cemetery to continue. The, the good news there was the the uh, environment agency have, have classed the cemetery as low risk um, and therefore are, are, are happy for it to continue to be used. Although they have said that because there's a dike uh, outside the edge of the cemetery on both sides, we shouldn't be using 10 metres in Nine from that. 10 metres. Well, 10 metres. Um, which means that when we do the extension, we'll have to have a different design to the way we do it uh, to, so that the edges are used more for access and also they can be used as I put in the thing for the set cremation plots can still be put within that 10 metres uh, above ground graves and sealed graves that, uh, they, so we still can put some things in there but obviously the design would need to incorporate those uh, restrictions if you like so um, there's a problem. Yeah. You've got you've got you stated stay for ten minutes. Normal that was primarily on environmental. Well yes, yeah, I, I was I was told by the um what's his name? The the top of King? Chris Black. Oh Chris Black. Sorry. Chris Black, Chris Black. Yeah. yeah. He told me that the environment is at said ten metres. Yeah, because normally with IDBs it's nine metres. Well this is yeah. this is apparently what the environment agency have said it, it to him was, was ten metres. Um <coughs> so there's a proposal <coughs> at the end of that document, which I will read out to you all. Hang on a second. Uh, the proposal at the end of the document was that Upwell Parish Council indicate to the Borough Council of Kingsland and West Norfolk that we wish to continue leasing the land between St Peter's Road and Stonehouse Road, currently used as Upwell Cemetery and allotments. Also that we wish to take on permanent responsibility for the running of the cemetery and if granted this right we will apply for planning permission for a change of use of some of the land currently used for allotments and the allotment car park <laughs> to a cemetery <coughs> extension which we will design and manage in accordance with the environment agency stipulations. So that's, and that, that 
document I shared with Brian Long and Chris Black and they were happy with the content of that document has been a fair reflection of the meeting and happy with the wording of, uh, of the proposal. So, I throw it open. Yeah, there's only two things. There is the allotment land that's there at the moment. They've said either we would continue to lease that as a, as a use for use as a cemetery or we would purchase that for use as a cemetery. They, they did, they talked about purchasing it, but he said it would be you wouldn't be able to send it to us on anything other than commercial basis and that would suggest it would be quite expensive to buy whether they were happy to continue to lease it for a fairly low sum which is what they're doing now so yeah so we've got nothing so, so we on that allotment land we, we've had a bad issue for the borough council before and we've had um, charges and I, I remember some of them anyway well again when we took the allotment land over or it was suggested by a former parish councillor that we could use that land as allotments. We didn't pay any rent for a long, long time and then the borough council suddenly cottoned on and we had to pay them back rent and then you now we pay them an annual rent for the for the allotment land. Which has always seemed strange that we pay them a lot pay them a pay them an annual rent for the allotment land but we didn't pay them didn't pay them anything for the cemetery whilst it was under I think under trial. I think that's probably because it was a trial. Mm rather than a long-term thing and I think the implication of what they said to us was that if we took it on we would be leasing the land off them. Yeah. It should be in theory if this goes ahead it should be the entire land you can't have the allotment land and the cemetery land leased as two separate entities because the whole lot is or the allotments is earmarked for cemeteries anyway so if you start taking start taking the allotment land in the future for the cemetery you could end up with you know one plot each, uh, one plot at the very end of the allotment after however many decades, and still be paying the same amount of land rent. So it would make sense for the whole field to be incorporated as one annual payment rather than cemetery and allotments. Should, should we not understand what that number might be? Well, the point was to they would that would be something that if we decided to go ahead, yeah. they would then put some more people on it who would discuss with us and come up with. So this is a suggestion in principle as opposed this to... This is a, yeah, basically they wanted something from the par parish council that, that where we had discussed it, agreed a way forward, and then once they knew that's what we wanted to do, they would then sit down with us and do the more detailed aspects, like as you suggest, that, that how much we're talking about from a leasing point of view. Yeah. And the, the £27,000 that they, they did hold... They don't. Recently. No. I know they say that now. I didn't. But I was at the meeting where they said it was there. I yes, I, I, we, we, did, we, did, we brought that up at the, at the meeting and they said the chap who'd spoken to Councillor Banfield, was it? I think. Yeah, it was Chris Banfield. I think Chris Black was there as well. I think uh, Midland were there as well. And that was definitely the £27,000. Well, what they said to us at that meeting, obviously I can only report what they said to us at that meeting, was that <coughs> all monies that they take for selling plots goes into the revenue stream and isn't set aside for anything so there isn't any money set aside and unfortunately that document where it's mentioned in the uh you know, three years ago 2018 when 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 we took it on that document was never signed by anybody right so there's no legal we've got no legal recourse to say well you signed the document saying this 27 thousand they um that document was produced, read, but no, nobody ever signed it. Oh dear! Yeah. What, a, what a strange coincidence. Yeah. It's just, it's just a little bit. You know, mm. Yeah, I'd be nervous about taking you know, a, 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 a lease of a piece of land if, if we don't, you know, to people who have been a little bit. Um, well, clearly, I think if we did, we'd make sure whatever agreement we agreed on, we would sign this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not committing to doing anything other than to a. Uh, a course of action and obviously if we can't reach an agreement that we're all happy with then we won't necessarily you know con conclude anything i think the, the positive stuff that, that i put in the thing and we said at the time was that from our point of view as a parish council and from the feedback we've had from parishioners who, who have relatives in the cemetery is that people are much happier with the way it's been maintained since we took it on and we, we, we were concerned, obviously, there may be hidden costs, which I think we now understand 
the cost because obviously we've been running it for three years. And also, um, we were worried about the environment agency aspect of things, which now appears to have been resolved given the low risk and the 10 meters are the only things. That, so to be, if a planning application went in, as long as the design that we put in took account of this 10 meters, the environment agency, and obviously we didn't speak to them, but the, the, the message they'd had given to the Borough Council, which they passed on to us, was that providing we were within those stringencies, then they wouldn't object. They did suggest uh, applying for a, a larger area, didn't they? They said that the, if you're going to put a plant you said you probably should do more than just the car park area, you should go a few allotments up. It doesn't mean you've got to use them straight away, but it means that when you do need to use them, you haven't got to go through uh, the process again. You've already got the, the yeah, permission to do it. If the, the planning application would last for three years, as normal planning applications, once you've got the change, you use the permission to do it. If you did something to which is now the grassed car park area, and that was part of a bigger area, at least that would then keep the planning application okay because you've started the start to work on it. So that wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be no problem. And that would be silly to stop people using the allotments too early. Obviously, at some point, there's going to have to be a change of use, but it means yeah. that if we know it's going to be five to ten years or whatever figure we come up with before allotment A or B is needed, then we can leave, leave those being used for part of that time you know, before we, we close the allotment, as it were. I want to say that if the Parish Council does take over the um, cemetery full time, that as it progresses the extension of the cemetery, then the dyke, especially not on Chris's and Jamie's side, but the other dry side, that need, as it needs to be progressively cleared out as they go, because um, in the past, obviously the, the fence um, between the cemetery and the next landowner, that landowner has progressively filled that dyke in, so it's now up to the end of the fence. There's now loads of concrete and everything in the bottom of that dyke. We cannot allow that dyke, even if, if it's fenced off, like with a close border fence as it is now, cannot allow that dyke to be filled in progressively by the adjoining landowner because that will then have implications on the water table and, and yes. drainage anyway. Yes. So there needs to be some, you know, the, the dyke needs clearing out progressively and there needs to be made sure that the landowner doesn't keep start putting all his garden rubbish in it and filling yep. it in because it can't be seen. Basically, he has only laid half, because only half the dyke is his, another half belongs to the council or whatever yeah. because, so he's filling in part of the council's land as well. Yes, we would obviously have to be more, more vigilant perhaps than the pillar council have been in the past on the it's because of the close bordered fence and you can't see they put it on obviously yeah, the land is, side of the dike and he which is understandable the, because obviously you want to enclose the cemetery but we we we'll probably need to keep access yeah. to the dike in some way on that subject of clearing the dike community service and air back in action although very small groups um, I did contact the borough council regarding insurance, etc., for the churchyard, which is something a little bit different. But um, if I got a copy of the insurance for the parish council, yeah, yeah, they will do that when they work their way through for the project. Good. But if you let me know when the trees are down, yeah, it's not going to be till the end of January. Well, that's the one. Yeah. So. The question is then, are we happy to take the first step, as it were, by passing this or an amended version of this so that we can then start more detailed negotiations with the firm? I propose that we um, take on your proposal for amending. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. As it stands, to continue leasing it and also to um, express our wish to take on permanent responsibility for the cemetery. I think once they've got that, they'll then want us to sit down with them and be more detailed, but that's fine. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't um, do anything detailed until they had the council express a view, which is what this, this is about. So, thank you. So, any amendments to that proposal? So all those in favour of the other proposal then that we take it to the first stage. Mm. Thank you. So that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, right, the next uh, item on the agenda is to note any health and safety issues. Obviously these are uh, 
Pastor to Melanie or straight to the County Council when we get them. Are there anything anyone wants to tell Melanie at this stage? No? Okay, thank you. Right, finance is the next section. Uh, right, so the first one is no payments made since the last meeting. So that was document was circulated. These were approved at the last finance meeting, right? So we don't need to approve them, it's just for you to note to really. Yeah. So any questions on any of the payments made in that document? No, no. That was the monthly payment list. Yeah. No. Okay, so that's that's noted. Uh, again, for noting the income and expenditure balance was circulated. Again, any questions for Melanie on those? No? Okay. And the, the quarterly pro I'm just jumping yeah. Yeah, quarterly jump pro in. Pro free. progress against budget. I'm a month ahead of myself. It should be the end of December, not the end of November. So there isn't one. So we haven't got one then? No. 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 Right. Oh, scribble that out. Right. Uh, the next item then is the budget for 22-23. So again, this was there were there's some several documents circulated following the finance committee meeting, which is the minutes of the meeting, and then two draft budgets and a commentary on the two draft budgets, explaining them in detail. Um, the the common features of the two budgets, most of the budgets are most budgets are common, but there's a an increase in precept of 5% recommended in, in either budget that, re that is recognising the increased costs the council has been experiencing uh, due to inflation going up. And also that the um, support grant is no, now no longer that's available true. Yes, as that's well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the reason there's two budgets is that we didn't know at the time, we still don't know, if we will need to or will be wanting to borrow in any money for the whole. Um, and it was, we couldn't therefore produce one budget including it because clearly we didn't know we were doing it, but at the same time we couldn't produce a budget not including it because that would make it difficult to go ahead, should we? So we basically got two budgets, one of which is they're both exactly the same except in the lines that are affected by whether or not we did the, the refurbishment project basically and if you've read the commentary you'll understand the rationale behind each of the decisions that were made uh, what do people want do people want me to go through each one or do you want to ask questions about how you've gone through them already what, what, how do people want to manage it Shall I read the commentary out? Well, I've got some here. Basically, if there's anybody that's looked at the budget, if, there's, if, there's, if, they, if they don't understand the figures or where they've come from, they should, should ask. I don't think there's any necessary to go through it line by line. The differences between them, just, just to clarify, is one would in includes repayments on a loan and grants to do with the loan. Not to do with so to do the refurbishment, I beg your pardon. And the other one doesn't include any of them, but does include costs that would be required to repair the things that need urgent repair in the hall if we aren't going to do the refurbishment. Because obviously, those we needed doing last year, they haven't been done yet because it's going to be part of the project, and they still need doing, and they still. Uh, so doing nothing isn't really an option. It's either repair them alone as they stand or repair them as part of the bigger project. So essentially that's the two budgets. Richard, sorry. It was only just, just um, the 5% for 
yep. increase in the, in the preset, um, which was down to inflation. We, it's only last year. Last year we didn't increase the preset. In the previous two years we did increase it. No, we haven't increased it since I've been chair. No. No, last year we didn't. You were chair last year, weren't you? This is my third year. This is your third year. So it's two years where we haven't increased it. But we were, we were increasing the preset gradually to take account of the fact that we were using the um, the payment, what the payment is called. Yeah, support. That's the not support the support grant. That's not what we. I was, I'm not, I was on the council, but I, I was under the impression we had not increased it for some time. I think you, if I remember rightly, Richard, you proposed that we had a um, the year-on-year year exactly increase, right. but I don't think it got approved. We did, we did two years, two years of increase, I think. We did two consecutive years of increase, for, for specifically around that payment. Because I remember for the, oh, sorry, Richard, but I remember for a long time the precept was thirty-six thousand and mm, a yeah. few pounds, and then it was increased to what it is now. A few in the, the last time, other than since then, yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah, yet. I think you're right there. We didn't increase, it, not didn't increase it last year because he thought it was no, wrong. It wasn't last year, we didn't increase it last year, and we probably didn't increase it the previous year. But there, are, there were two consecutive years where we did increase it specifically because of um, losing the, uh, um, the, the the grant payment sort of thing. So, so we have already, I'm all saying we've already used that as an argument for for an additional preset. And then when you look at inflationary costs, inflation is running at about three percent. So it just, it just seems it would be difficult. I don't think it's just inflation though, I mean it's Melanie's salary because she's now still qualified, so that that wasn't it, a it that was basically wasn't a overheads generally, yes, it wasn't just inflation. Yeah. I know Chris is gone, but county council are trying to get through six percent at the moment. Yeah. They They're trying to get that down to three. Inflation's about four. It roughly puts about two pound fifty per annum on a bandy property. Certainly, it doesn't seem excessive given that we haven't increased it for the last two years. I mean, I think it's longer than two years, but I might be wrong. Mm. Certainly, the finance meeting. I think we all I'll thought it was I'll more than two years. Have a look. I'll try and have a look back. I'll go on the log to see if I can find a. The work to see what previous precepts were and when they changed. I can tell you, I can't tell you now, but I can tell you. I can find out. You, but I think you. it's about three or four years ago when it last changed from 36 up to 37 something. Because I looked. So, what was that increase? In, sorry, what would that increase? In, well, no, you can't I don't tell know what percentage now. it was. I can tell you, but I, no. I've got to go on the website to do it. But I can look and tell Given you. Given that this is taking it from 37 to 39, was it? It takes it from 37721 to 39607. So it's just under 2000, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that if you went up from 36, that would suggest it's probably about 3%, something like that. Yeah, I certainly remember Richard's idea and proposal to. I think the argument was, if I remember correctly, that we'd have to justify doing a year on year increase on the on the precept. And there was also this talk of a cap coming in on the amount mm. that you'd raise your precept by. And there was talking about capping at 2% or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I know there's that various... Work. When we put those up 70% last year. Yeah, I think parish <laughs> councils weren't included in the cap in the end, were they? <laughs> I think there was... I think Borough and County have a cap, don't they? But, yeah, but yeah. Uh, parish don't. Yeah, but there was, there was talk of them bringing that cap down onto... Uh, Council, so we were trying to keep everything. I remember we sort of keep ourselves ahead of the game in case we was capped. But I certainly remember Richard's proposal, but I, I don't think it was a. I don't think if it, if it was a, a proposal then to <coughs> increase the precept year on year, I don't think it was approved. But so we haven't done it for the last two years anyway. So it wasn't a sort of stipulation or mandatory thing, but. The only other question I have is on the cemetery and the point. To, to, in the three years that we've been looking after the cemetery, we've kept that as a separate budget and that as, as, a, as a pot of money now. Have we that pot of money that, now? No, what we did 
we, we, we last year, because I met you, I set, you obviously went out of the meeting and said, but we had, it was not a separate budget until last year. Last year it became a separate budget. Um, and we, we were, the first draft of the budget had it as a separate budget, but following a, the meeting with the Power Council, where they said they didn't come from um, cemetery which counted as revenue rather than as kept separate, we decided it would be sensible to follow the same policy. So we redid the budget, amalgamating it rather than keeping it as a separate. It's, it, it's purely where to call it in, basically, but essentially it's now part of the general income rather than as a separate. Although we still will know how much is brought in separately, but it's, it's being counted in the same thing because that's the way the borough do it. We thought it was sensible to do it the same way the borough did it. So the, the only issue with that is that, that um, the, the value of that money to the cemetery is lost by incorporating that into the, into the, the general parish budget. And that's, we, we, historically, we, we've experienced that. We've experienced it with the village hall. We've experienced it with, with lots of other things that we've done. It, it, was, it was hard work to get the council to take on the cemetery in the first place. We've taken on the cemetery, and surely now it just looks as though we're just taking that pot of money out because it's there. Whereas actually, we need to maintain the cemetery, and we need to actually build up a reserve so as in the future when the cemetery becomes full, it doesn't just become a piece of overgrown wasteland. Well, that, that, they were, in the budget, there is money allocated towards you know, a reserve for that sort of thing. You know, for example, there's a thousand being set aside. But it's not representative of the revenue that's been brought into. So when people are buying a plot at the cemetery, if I were buying a plot at the cemetery, I would have in my mind that that, that plot, that, that part of money that I'm paying over is to ensure the maintenance of that cemetery for the period of time that whoever is in the ground in that cemetery. But we're, we're taking that away. But right. that's exactly what the Borough Council do. Yeah, so we do that. doesn't mean that we've got to do it, does it? That's all. Well, without it, the finances of this, this, this council actually look sick. Yeah. Because last year and the year before, it was included. So all the calculations were based on it being included. And when you take it out, there's a hole. So, so by putting it back in, the so hole is filled. But we're now conscious of the situation. So we can avoid the situation you've just described by making sure that year on year we do set aside enough money. It, it's in, at the moment, the amount it's brought in the last two years, because of COVID and things, has been more than previous years. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's an imbalance. The, the budget is very imbalanced if you don't include it. So it's only imbalanced in that, okay, more people have gone into, into the cemetery in this, this year, unfortunately. But the, the overall sum is the same, isn't it? We're still, at the end of it, we're still going to have, there's only so many plots in that piece of land. Yes. And at the end of it, surely there needs to be some sort of fund at the moment that fund is gone. It's not gone, it's just not coming to it, it will be gone because it's in our budget until it'll be spent. We can't get it back. But it won't. It would be spent anyway if it was in a separate budget and we still won't get it back. Sorry? It would still be spent if it was in a separate budget and we still won't get it back. I think, well, no, I think the expenditure on the cemetery has been purely around maintenance. And so we've got two things. We've got two things with the, with the cemetery. We've got the, the regular annual maintenance, which, which is a fairly constant sum. Mm. Uh, and then we've got the, the, the second thing we've got coming up is, is the potential for, for planning to extend that cemetery. Yes. Uh, we're not going to have any money for it. Well, the, the, we have budgeted for it. We have budgeted for it already. And how much have we budgeted? Well, for, the, for this year, because if this year, it's going to be basically the planning for it and getting ready with the applications. A thousand pounds being put in for the uh, for the drawing up the plans and the application of the planning commission. And how does that compare to the revenue taken in the last twelve months? Well, it's obviously less. <coughs> a lot less, significantly less, forty-five times less. Can't remember the name. It's forty-five. It's thirty-five. Isn't it? No, they've got forty-five in. The well, in the budget, that's not what we've taken the last year. That's no, that's no. what we've had yeah. amalgamate over the period of the three years. But the most of the money has come in the last yeah. 18 months. <coughs> just since we didn't have the cemetery, and the, the intention with the borough is, was, our understanding of the borough was that they would have some of that money back if, um, if, if they took the cemetery back. So. No, that, yeah. that, that idea bit the dust at the meeting last week. Because they, because they don't consider the money separate, they're not expecting any back, because as far as they can see, it's part of revenue. 
I just can't see that there'd be that many people who'd be that happy with that person. I'm not happy with it. I think it should still be in a separate pot. And if there's, a, if there's a hole in the budget, that's for the parish camp. That's, that's, that's for us to, to work out where that hole is. It's not, it's not for the cemetery to prop it up. It? That was, that was never the, it was never the intention that we took over the cemetery as, as being a cash cow for plugging holes in, in a parish council budget. Yeah. I don't suppose it was, but I think unless the cemetery money is included, can't leave it. Be hard. I just, unless I don't suppose it was, but unless the cemetery money is included in the budget, I think we're going to be hard pushed to do things like the lighting that Andrew was talking about earlier. Um, it would it would drop our budget significantly. Well, we can't do it then, can we? So we won't, that, be, that, doing, we won't be doing anything then. Yeah. Mm. Personally, I think that's more favourable decision over taking money out of the cemetery that we wouldn't have had. But the cemetery is going to continue to, to generate income. I think the problem is, and I understand exactly what you say, and I don't disagree in principle with it, but the problem is because the cemetery has generated much more income than would normally have been expected, we've got this really silly situation where the council, on the one hand, is trying to make ends meet with difficulty and it's got this large chunk of money which it's ignoring and it makes it doesn't make a lot of sense for the council to do that it makes more sense for it to be included as one budget so that the council can smooth its costs and then make sure it budgets enough money into reserves so that those things that you're concerned about are being covered I agree with you, what we don't want to do is make the same mistake that's been made for the village all over the years, which of not budgeting any money so that there's nothing in the pot. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, but that's, it, it will get lost like that, won't it? Because we will record a set of minutes tonight. Well, it doesn't have to be lost because what the, there's a thing called earmark reserves, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Which, when earmark reserves are not allowed to be spent on anything other than the thing they've been earmarked for. So we just need to make sure any money we put as cemetery money is earmarked so it can't be used for anything else, thereby avoiding your concerns that there won't be That's anything That's what Richard's there. saying though, isn't it? You want that for Yeah, but you're talking about the entire zero. thing, which I think, I think is, <coughs> it's not good, prudent management to put I think that I much money aside as earmarked. We'd all be hard-pressed to argue to somebody who's charging £800 or however much it is for a plot. In the, in the cemetery, uh, this 800 pound for your plot, 400 pound of it's going to go to your plot, 400 pound of it's going to go to some street lights. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we argue that? Because the because councils are responsible for all those things, and you know, you're, when you pay your tax, you don't pay this pound is for this, this pound is for that. You pay your tax, and then the the government or in this case the council decides how to spend it. So I don't see. We don't apothecate income that way. But we have to. I don't and there's no reason why we can't do it. We didn't do it the year before. We said we would do it this year. And when we've done it, it's caused problems to the doing the next budget because of the way we've done it. We then learned from the county uh, from the borough council that in fact they don't do it that way, they do it the way we're suggesting we do it now. So it seems that we were doing it in a way that was different from, from our higher authority and it was causing us problems doing it that way, so it made more sense to do it the way they're doing it, uh, thereby solving a lot of anxieties that we were getting, plus making sure we do make sure we set enough aside year on year so that we never have a problem that you just described of not being able to um, not being able to do what's needed to be done to the cemetery. For example, we budget nine thousand pounds a year for maintenance, which is way more than was being spent. It is way more. Before but we've, proved, we've proven that there is there is sufficient income from the cemetery to sustain yeah. the maintenance that's required in the cemetery. So all of a sudden, the budget. So we'll set a budget for maintenance and over the course of the next 10, 15, 20 years that budget will slowly get squeezed 
and then all of a sudden we'll be back in the same situation as the borough council. Well, that, that, you, you're assuming that you can't say what's going to happen in the next 10 years. No, but given based on historical, what's, what's happened historically, so historically we all sit around here, we all know that with everything that, that's, that's happened in the past, the minutes get lost, the information gets lost, and all of a sudden we're in situations like we are with the, with the village hall. And that actually nobody really knows what was kind of said, and we all kind of make our best mm -hmm. guess of it, and, and exactly the same is going to happen with the cemetery. So surely we would, we would have been better off just leaving it alone and letting the borough rob them. It, it just doesn't make sense. But didn't when, before the parish council took over the trial, Upwell Parish Council had its precept, the Borough Council had its precept, and Upwell and special expenses. And people used to say, what's the special expenses? Oh, that's the cemetery. And it's something, a ridiculous amount of money, you know, low, ridiculously low amount of money. So what was the Borough Council doing with all the, you know, thousands of pounds they was making from burials? That was the whole, that was the whole reason why particularly I wanted to take over the cemetery. Because actually, Upwell people, Paying for Upwell residents to be buried in Upwell Cemetery, and as a parish council, we should be ensuring that that looks after that se that cemetery. Because th there comes a point when somebody has been put into the cemetery, they were an Upwell residence, there comes a point when perhaps they haven't got family in the house, but we still need to maintain the general area. And as time goes on, you know, I know we've got a big lot of plot of land down there at the allotments, but as time goes on, say in 50 years' time, all of a sudden that cemetery is, is, is a burden. So if there isn't if there isn't a substantial sum that's that's, that's held in perpetuity to, to fund but, that cemetery, it does eventually just become an overgrown. But piece what of I'm land. saying is, Richard, that the borough council was taking an income from burials and cremations in the cemetery, and they was charging the upwell taxpayer, the upwell and special expenses as well. So taxpayers were all paying towards the maintenance of the cemetery. Well, why didn't that maintenance come out of the burials and sit and cremations that the borough council was charging? And that was the reason why. Myself and I think Prue as well, and certainly Ros, that was the whole reason for us going down the route of taking over the cemetery, so as we can try and protect that, that money that the Upwell residents are putting into the cemetery. I, I don't think they're saying that there is no budget that's going to be made for the upkeep of the cemetery, we're not saying that at all. I think what we're saying is that in this particular instance where we stand at the moment, there is more money in what we called at the moment the cemetery pot than is necessary for the upkeep. Today. Today. But not tomorrow. Yeah, but we're not talking about taking all of it. And also the cemetery will be generating more money. We don't know, we can't predict. But it has to, unfortunately, by design. So it's not as if it's closing the gates and that's it. We're not maintaining it ever again. That's not the case. We just need to take some of that, that some of that money needs to be incorpor incorporated back into the general parish budget because otherwise we're, in, we're becoming insolvent. It would, it would seem odd that we moved to a position of insolvency in, in such a short period. That's only time. because prior to the cemetery budget, as I understand it, being separated out, it was included in the main budget and it made us. It, it made us look really good. It was Take included in the last year's budget meeting and the year before's budget meeting. It was included as part of general reserves, which, and so that all the calculations on precept setting and expenditure were based, assuming it was part of general reserves. When it was taken out of general reserves and put in a separate pot that couldn't be called upon, it suddenly made our general reserves much smaller, and that had an effect that, in fact, when you projected forward, you know, if, if nothing changed, there would be insolvency is probably strong term, but they, they would, it would be, you know, a, a, heading towards a negative position rather than a positive position. Therefore, it made sense, given the, that in fact the way the Borough Council do it is this way, that we should do it the same way, which, which is the way we've done it for the last two years. That was consistent. It made the figures look healthy again, because obviously you suddenly didn't have this black hole up here from nowhere. Um, but, what I, but I take on board exactly what you said, that what, when they're going forward, we need to be sure that we do leave sufficient cemetery income 
to cover the costs going forward of maintenance, etc. in the cemetery, particularly, as you say, when the cemetery is no longer generating income because it's full. But that time is, as you intimated, probably 50 or more years in the future, I would guess. I don't know exactly, because who knows how quick, but you know, it, it, it's as long again as it is now, isn't it? The, the space beyond the cemetery. And even with probably a slightly reduced capacity due to the 10 meter thing, it's gonna be there for many, many years to come. So I can't, although I understand your argument, it, to put that much money aside in 2021, when there's not going to be a need for it until probably 2081 or whatever. It is something for that change, it is. Yeah, well, we've done that. I'm just, I'm just saying, it's, it's, I'm just, I, I, I agree with the argument in principle. It's the amounts and when is the thing I'm saying. I didn't, it, it's, it's, it's difficult for the council to justify putting that much money in a pot now when it's not going to be needed probably for 50 or 60 years. My argument is, is it was never in the council's pots in the cemetery pot. No. Well, but it was, it was until we decided last year for this year to take it out, it was in the council pot. We might have, we had a line of income cemetery, but it all counted towards the, the reserves and it was in general reserves. It wasn't a, a separate, it's the first year we've had a separate reserve for it was since about June last year, when, uh, this year, sorry, uh, when we started doing it that way. Or that's April. You know, when we started, when we started the financial year, that was the first time we'd actually accounted for it separately. And, in, and I don't think we realised the consequence of that until Melanie started producing figures for this year's budget. When we realised that because the general reserves no longer had X thousands in them, they were out. It suddenly made the general reserves too low. Um, and the reason it's got that is because for the last two to three years we've been budgeting on the basis that it was in the general reserve. I think when we took the took the cemetery over on the trial, and the borough council gave us X amount of money. It's decided to ring that ring fence that money and any income thereafter for the three year trial, so that. Um, Kate's wages at the time and subsequently Melanie's wages um, it didn't matter how many hours they spent sorting out burials, cremations and cemeteries because that money was going to that wage was going to come out of the cemetery pot and I think if I remember correctly the reason we ring fenced it was because we was all under the impression that if at this point now we decided no we don't, we don't want to take on the maintenance the borough council said well, we'll, have what, we'll have back what money you've got in that cemetery, in your cemetery fund, or what money you've made over the last few years, we will have that back. But that is no longer the, that's no longer the case. Plus the twenty-seven thousand or whatever they said that we could have if we took it on permanently, which they've now sort of wheedled the way out of. But I can agree with Richard in some principle that there ought to be a cemetery fund, but I think the amount of money that is in it. Just sitting there, I mean, if you said what say, 35 or 40, 45, 45 thousand pounds. Well, if, if applying for planning permission is going to take a thousand, what's what over the next 12 months or five years is that 45 plus whatever income still keeps coming in? What's that money got to be spent on? I think it'd be, you know. What about the future? Planning permission to change views for the allotments? Fencing, tarmac path, is that just coming out of that fund? Yeah, well, the, we, we haven't uh, this year allocated any money towards the fencing the tarmac in because we imagine that would be the year after once we've gone through the yeah, process. Yeah, we're still going to need but it. But we've got the money for the planning application and that are reserved. Next year, you're right, you'll need to uh, reserve more yeah. because obviously there will be have more costs involved in actually doing the work, work. You know, whatever that work is. But that's going to be next financial year, not this financial year. Mm. But the money's not going to disappear between now. We're not going to run out and spend it all between now and this time next year. It's just putting it in which column it's in. Mm. Would it be worth having not a separate budget, but as from next year or say next April or whatever, then from April to April, 
having a separate pot of money what what the, you know, for the income from the cemetery. We could do that. We, we, that's essentially what we've done now, except we haven't had it. We could say that any income is for that year, this is the income from the cemetery, and then when we have our budget meeting in November, yeah. say that like we've got in X thousands, does that all of that, half of that, quarter, how much of that needs to go into a year mark reserve for future things? And how much can be allowed into general? That would be, and by having that as part of your procedure, that would avoid the scenario you mentioned of us forgetting what we were going to be doing because it would be annual decision taken at every budget meeting. That might, that might be a way of safeguarding your concerns and at the same time not hamstring in the council that it has to have vast sums it can't touch when it's struggling. Because there was, Rich said there was, so, I mean, the village hall always had um, a budget amount in the parish council's precept and some years that was just stripped out. Oh, the parish, the village hall's got its own money to say, to so that we don't have to put the precept out, we'll take out that £2,000 allowed for village hall repairs and then that following year we want something doing, oh well, sorry, we haven't, got, we haven't budgeted for it. We'd probably still pay for it, but they say, well, we haven't got a budgeted amount. Where are we going to take this money from? So I can see Richard's point that if there isn't a cemetery figure, no, I agree. it could, I agree. could get lost. But I'm just thinking, you know, it's a lot of money and if it can help the parish, I mean, it is an income. It is the biggest single substantial income that we have, you know. It has been in the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, the land rents, the allotments don't make any money at all. I mean, that is providing a, an amenity for not just Upwell, Residents, but you know, um, some Emnath and occasionally out, or Outwell Emnath and in the past Friday Bridge residents because those parishes don't have allotments, so we're not sort of don't turn them away if there's a vacant if there's a vacant plot. So you know garden lots, but the land the land rents don't generate every year. You know, that amount is the cemetery is the single biggest earner. But I'm not saying we should be using that. You know. Yippee, X amount of people have died this year and generated this amount of money. You know, nobody wants that, but I think that money should be incorporated into the overall um, Paris Council budget or whatever. But it should, we should all still be aware that when something wants doing on the cemetery, we're committed to taking money to do it. Unlike the village hall where it was stripped out for a couple of years and say, oh, we haven't got the money for, for doing it. So that's why the cemetery got moved from a separate box to that line. There's lots of other stuff in this budget which we obviously need to talk about on just as well. So it's a pity you couldn't come to the finance meeting because obviously you'd have had all these conversations. I very appreciate you weren't allowed so you couldn't come. Mm -hmm. So do any other items in there we want to talk about? before we have any proposals or amendments and things. Can I just say then that if we have like, if an amendment that as from April next year, we have a line in the um, budget, you know, where we have the quarterly budget, we have a line in where every month Melanie adds any cemetery income in a specific line somewhere. Which is looked at at the budget meeting the next Yeah, the next because at the moment there isn't anything there, so we won't know. Melanie can just say, oh, you know. I need to do income and outgoing to work on. Yeah, just so we know yeah, what's so coming into the cemetery the next, and what's yeah. going out, because at the moment there isn't that line. So oh. could I have that as, the, you know, as an amendment to the, basically not so much the budget, but the spreadsheet to show what is what comes in and goes out in the cemetery so we can keep an eye on it. That way it won't be forgotten about. What we could do as well, just as a safeguard, because I fully appreciate where which is what are coming from, we could perhaps look at putting a line in our standing orders about it. You know, so that so that it's actually set out in black and white in standing orders that that we have to do that. We should hopefully avoid the problems of us leaving the council and other people coming on and forgetting you know, losing that corporate memory of, of what we're doing so 
that might be something that we need to look at. Is it finding the right word and put something in standing orders? That's an action. Anybody else want to bring anything up? Have you gone? Has everybody gone through both the doc, both the budgets, so they know exactly what's in them? So what we're saying is, one of these budgets will be the one that we adopt, based on whether or not that we hold the refurbishment project goes ahead. So if it doesn't go ahead, it'll be the budget without, and if it does go ahead, it'll be the budget with. And as I said, most slides are identical, and the only ones that are different are the ones related to the village hall and grants consequent upon the village hall. Right. No questions. Can, we, can I have a proposal then that uh, we adopt both these budgets based and, and decide which at a later date based on the outcome of the village hall? Colin? Second it. Second it. Um, do I think we've all already agreed Andy's suggestion that we don't need to build that into the yes. in, into this particular proposal? We've already mm -hmm. had that proposal. Yeah. 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 Okay. So all those in favour then of of Colin's proposal that we adopt both of these and choose which one at a later date. Again, do to understand it. We can't. We've got to adopt something because oh. Bellamy has to put in a return to the yes, yeah, sure. Council. and it's got to be done. And so by we December. need. So we needed to decide on the precept, but we can't at this point decide on a final budget because we don't know at this stage what we're going to be doing but we can we know what we're doing for 95 percent of the items it's only the small number that are affected by whether we do the refurbishment or not so basically what we're saying is this is our budget and we'll either do the village hall or we won't do the village hall and one budget reflects doing it and one budget reflects not doing it essentially so that's what we're saying is that's what we agree we will do. Does everybody understand that? I didn't know you could do two. Well, we can't do two finally, but we can do, we can. We can basically, take we're approving a 5% rise in the precepts yeah. with the figure that we've got or not approving a 5%. That's, that's, the, that's the bottom line, but obviously there's a lot of other budget lines in there that we're well, approving. Both of them have got the 5%. Both of them have got the 5% in. Yeah. Both of them have got. So I need you to do that really as a separate, the precept as okay. a separate yeah. Yeah. We'll do that if you want to. Okay. So, so effectively we could... So I need to know the precept, to put the precept forming. Yeah, sure. We could say we don't agree to the budget, budget but we do agree to the 5% precept. Yes, you could. So there's a basis for, for, for an increase, but uh, we don't. Hmm. We, 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 we had a proposal and we did, we did do a vote on it. And most we went, I think was it six, four? I don't know, I didn't. I think, was it one or two? Do it again, Paul. Well, what well, I was going to say is, we, we, we might. It's difficult, having done the book, we can't really go back and change it, can we really? Six months before we go somewhere, isn't it? There's lots of them. That's six months before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but when we tell if you do the precept first as a separate well, entity. I'll have to do it as yeah. a separate. I've already, we've, what I'm saying is we've already done it. I, I, we got a proposal, we had it seconded, I put it out and people voted. Yeah. So I can't really say, well, we'll bother that then. I don't know how to do that. What we just voted for, 5%? Input well, input. What, what I'm going to clarify that in a minute by doing another proposal just to make sure that's, yeah. that's crystal clear. That's covered. But it, we have approved that because that's what's in the budget. But, yeah. but I, I wanted, I take Melanie's point, it would be nice to have that as a, as a separate uh, vote. I think I saw six hands up. That's what I counted. I counted four, but I didn't get round quick enough for the hands come down. So I don't well, know. there were two on that side, three on that side, and me. So that was six. Mm. All right. I don't think we can. 
I didn't inside. say which door was it. Oh. No, they, they no. did. And, and, Lord, and I said, then against, and Julie put her hand up, but Jill said she didn't understand what I think, I think, I think Jill said before, before the opportunity to vote uh, against. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So we haven't got the against or the abstains anyway. We haven't got that far, no, because no. We, we stopped, the, we, we, I called for the against, but we didn't get that far because Jill asked for clarification of what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'll, I'll be So does that mean we can so I've got scrap six. the first bit? I don't know what the rules are. I don't want to do something against We've only got 6-4. Then 6-4, the motion, we haven't got any against or abstentions. I know that, well. I appreciate that. Yeah. So does that stand? What, the 6-4? Should do, yeah. Yeah, because we've done it. So I, now I've explained what we've voted. I will do another vote on the precept image just to, for absolute clarity. So can I have all those against the proposal that Colin uh, proposed and Christine seconded? Okay. So what, what is the proposal that Colin yeah. made? Colin proposed that we adopted both of these budgets and chose at a later date, once we knew what we were doing with the village hall, which one we would go with. Anybody else against? Against. Okay, so one against. 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 Yeah. against. Uh. Two. Um, three abstentions. It's very grey, isn't it? No, it's not grey. Pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> and just for clarity, I will say now that that vote included a budget where there was a 5% rise in precepts. So just for clarity purposes, can, I, can we just confirm a 5% uh, raising people, all those in favour yeah. of the five percent raising people. Yeah. That was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And that will come back at a later date, the budget for the final decision, because that's a late. We don't need to put that in until a bit later. No, I need, I need that. But I think <coughs> until we we can't we vote on the precept by without seeing a budget in, in context, it, it would be <coughs> illogical to, to do that. So we have to have a budget in order to. Brought on a precept. Right, okay, thank you. Um, the next item was to discuss the Public Works Loan Board for the refurbishment of the Village Hall. Now, for those of you who have lost the will to live, um, <laughs> <laughs> we did vote at a previous meeting that we would put a cap on any loan that we may or may not take up. We didn't vote to take one. We just put a cap on it, and that was the 400,000 that's been bandied about yeah. since then. Um, from the point of view of one of the critical points that has been made is that it's all very well us talking about it, but we don't know if we would get that loan if we applied for it. And we've clarified with them that if you apply, they will tell you if you're going to get it or not, but you don't, that doesn't commit you to then having it. If you decide not to go down that path, you don't have to take the loan. It was just a case of knowing, because it's that we can't, for example, sign a, a form placing a contract with somebody if we don't know we've got the capability to pay the contract. <laughs> so what, the, what this is on the agenda for is to discuss whether we should put an application in simply to know if we would get it. Because if they say no, that clearly means we've got to completely rethink everything. So the proposal, this is an to whether we should uh, allow Melanie to formalise, because you, you, you've had conversations with them already, haven't you? Yes. But they, they, have, they said to you, they won't be able to tell you anything unless you actually apply. apply. So we've reached a sort of a, an impasse where we can't, find any more information out without actually making an application. But that application, as I said, does not mean we would take a loan out. We may choose at a, a future meeting not to take the loan out. Oh, so, so not, we're not committed? We're not committing to taking it. We're simply finding out principle. in principle if we would be able to get one. That's so so what, what, I'm, what I'm, I'm asking you to do is to give Melanie permission to make an application and then at the next meeting, hopefully, we'll know where we are with that. Yeah. That'll be good. Is everybody happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
So can you do that? Thank you. The next one was to discuss the donation to the uh, village, uh, the clock in Upwell Church. Uh, we traditionally give them a donation towards the maintenance of the clock every year. Yeah. It is £50. It's £100. Pound. We have actually given it to them because the finance um, approved it. Approved it. This is, but I just wanted it to. So, so, so it's a bit of pointless. I don't yeah. really know, but it's just there to, to sanction the, 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 the money that's already been given yeah. to the church. Yeah. It has been given every year for as long as I can remember. Yeah. So we are happy that money has been given. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And the next one is actually saving us some money, isn't it? It is saving us some money. So the local. Society of Local Council Clerks membership, um, which I've subscribed to ever since I've been here, because Kate did as well. The year, f the cost for the next year is one hundred and seventy-one pounds. I don't actually use it very much. I used it quite a lot last year because of my silk qualification, because the magazine has quite a lot of articles about planning and stuff like that. So it was really useful. Um, going forward, I'm sort of suggesting really, although it's me that gets the magazine and you don't get a lot out of it but I'm suggesting that we just scrap that for this year yeah, and save good. a bit of money. I think that that is in keeping with what we said last year and we, we did you subscribe to all the thought, stuff we thought you'd need yeah. but then you let us know what stuff you didn't need and if you were saying that's not necessary are we all happy that we should cancel that subscription? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> right the next item a lot of this we've already discussed but we probably just need to because uh, a lot of it was in the um, the action log. As you know, we had the surgeries in, in three holes in the extend, and one of the things I agreed we would do at that meeting, at those meetings I should say, uh, was that in order to make it clear to the residents who are looking at our agendas and at our minutes, we would split up issues under Upwell Matters, the extend Matters, three holes Matters, so people could see that we weren't not, you know, a lot of people didn't do anything to free elderly exam, which in fact is not true, but, it, but it, because it's not highlighted, it's not obvious sometimes what we have done. So by splitting them up into three headings in our sections, it does allow people to see, oh, that was a free old issue, that was a late end issue. So um, the, the, the trimming of the Jew, Jew Diamond Jubilee Cottage, for example, we put under three holes because obviously that in Lots Bridge, which is, you know, three holes. And then the next items are all the things that were brought up at the Lakes End surgery, the things that they were concerned about, which we discussed earlier with Councillor Dawson. Um, and it's good to know that the, he appears to have, in most cases, had a positive response talking to the highways people on that. In addition, Paul, can we uh, probably consider putting Lakes End back on the action report because we've got pre breach we can do things? Right. Yeah, we, we suspended that until something right, happened yeah. to put that for next they, they have responded now. Uh, they've got someone who is looking after it. Jason Rush, Rush is the name is. And um, I'm due to have a meeting as at the... Uh, See, all we need to do is take it off our action log and then something happens. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just about the case. <laughs> but, um, I haven't been there for months. I mean, nothing basically, happened. I'm working on behalf of the um, Upwell Drainage Board as well as the Borough Council in that respect. Right. So um, it would cost them a lot of money and time to solve the problem. So I'm sort of, um, I'm happy with the project. Thank you. So on the items on this agenda, let's just clarify what we're doing. For the possibility of moving the bus stop, um, we were going to confirm to the county council highways that, in principle, we agree with that. Is that happy? Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that we agree to do the same as we did at Toynton's Road in that we will supply a mirror and fit it but at the direction of, of highways as to where it should go which is basically what we did at Toynton's, yeah? yeah? Can I say if that goes ahead that the existing eyesore structure should be removed? The mirror. There's a, there's a, a non-functioning mirror. There's a huge, massive wooden structure which may have helped, but because it was a flat mirror, wouldn't have you know benefited. It probably benefited a little bit, but not a lot. 
Uh, a scene that belongs to a resident. I, I think um, Ross, Ross Thorpe, who was the original um, Hartley's farm manager, who lived in that one at the farm cottage, I don't know if he erected it, but that was on his garden. Um, that is now basically, there is a, it's fenced off and there is a gate going to it, but I don't believe the bit of land itself is being used as a garden or anything like that. So we could have a word with the landowner you know, in that cottage and say, would they agree to us taking the deck? It's just one massive wooden, ugly, I mean, I don't know how many bits of wood there is nailed or screwed together. Um, Shall we write to Stephen Hartley, who lives just there? Because uh, he's obviously that farm, isn't he? Stephen Hartley lives in the old schoolhouse, but yes. I don't think that. I no, think but I was thinking it was his farm, so he would probably. No, no it wasn't no. his farm. No. It's not his farm. Different Hartley, is it? Yeah, that was his farm. Well, it's hardly a that one, is it? The, the, was. the little cottage was. Oh, right. It was um, far, the farm manager's cottage, but then when things started to break up, that got sold. So you know I don't know who the landowner is, is now. So we don't know who yeah. then? No. You know what the address is, Andrew? Ross, yeah. um, he bought the cottage, didn't he? Yeah, but I don't know if he still lives there. Huh? I don't know if he still lives there. No, he's got a place who lives in the yeah. place of Can I ask that one of you speaks to Melanie at the end of the meeting just to give details of that so Melanie knows who to write to, thank you. If we can confirm that that existing structure is on their land, would they object to us taking it down and then we... Wait for the... Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, that's... Yeah, the highways engineer is visiting because Chris has already said he's doing that. Um, and the, and the other issue is, is something they've agreed in principle to already, so we don't need to do anything about that. So the only things we need to do as a parish council are give formal consent that we're happy for the bus stop to move, and secondly, take, take action on the river. Okay? Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, items for the agenda for next time, we'll again let them <coughs> Melanie have those in plenty of time so she can get the agenda out. The next meeting of this parish council is Monday the 10th of January, um, hopefully in Apple Hall, but it might be on Zoom, it might be here, it could be anywhere, who can tell? Um, at the moment, I understand from an email that Melanie sent me that they are asking the government to give permission again for these meetings to be held remotely. Yes. Uh, but that hasn't actually happened yet, which is why we went ahead with this meeting today. But there is some hope, although I think given that we're about to have a Christmas recess, I think mean, but there is some hope that, that uh, there may be the ability to do this remotely. Yeah. So I think at the moment it's done for that well, but obviously we will advise you close to the time if there's a change in form or venue for that meeting. Mm. Thank you. Meeting closed at 9.30. Gosh, that's late.